Hello, welcome to Act One of Romeo and Juliet as read by us, read and discussed by us. We're going to try to uh, help you understand what we're reading along the way. We've divvied up some of the parts for Act One, but we're going to start with the chorus. I'm going to read it. And while I'm reading, um, Rebecca and Fiona are going to be marking words and phrases for discussion. So as you're reading, you want to always like look at the words that you don't understand, make a mark or highlight them, and then stop and figure them out. And you really want to read it twice. You know, go through it first and see which words kind of stick and don't work for you, but try to get the gist of the whole thing and then go back after looking at what those words mean or discussing them with somebody and then see what kind of other meaning you can get out of it. That's a good tip right there. So I'm going to read the chorus. They're gonna ask me about some of the words and phrases and then we're gonna work out some of the meaning before we move on to the rest of act one, scene one. All right, are we ready? Yes. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the two hours traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. All right, now don't forget you have your reader's diary with you too. The reader's diary, at least for act one, um, there's a study guide on the front, but for all of our videos, what really matters is the reader's diary portion. And so up here, it's going to say something about um, scene one, the gang fight. At the top, it has the pre-reading notes section. And really, this is our pre-reading right now. It's talking about the chorus and thinking about what this is really being, being uh, told to us right now. Because Shakespeare is giving you an introduction and actually kind of telling you everything that's going to happen. Spoiler alert in the whole play. So um, when you're going through this and thinking about what is it, what's going on in the chorus, then you want to write stuff in your pre-reading notes things you might be understanding from that. So that'd be a good time to have that out ready to do. Okay, so what words and phrases did we stop and mark? What does civil blood mm. makes civil hands? Good kind of question. Thing. And I would tell you, um, first of all, think about what, when you think of civil, where do you see that often in writing or hear it? When, like civility. Yeah, being civility. civil to each other. Yeah. Okay. Civilization. Civilization, yeah. uh -huh. okay. And civil itself, like, is there a phrase? Oh, that you, civil services or civil engineering. There's civil like, servants. Civil servant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so a servant who's yeah. a civil servant, what are they serving? Um, society. The community. Society. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. So <laughs> when somebody talks about the Civil War, uh, what is that war between? <gasps> People of the same country. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So okay. civil blood is actually blood of people of the same place. So in um, Italy at the time, Italy wasn't a country at, at all. It was a, a group of city-states. And so Verona, the town where this all takes place, is a city-state. It's ruled by a prince and every other city-state in, uh, in the country of Italy, which is now a country, which wasn't a country then, they all have their own prince. And so in that town, all those people are the same nation, the same people, and they're killing each other. And so that's like what, gangs. It's entirely like gangs. This is like totally the mafia, by the way, came out of this time period. The people, the, <laughs> the powerful families in Italy at that time ended up being the mob bosses of today. Oh Literally gosh. bloodline, that's where that all comes from. Oh, and uh, having a city-state situation where big, uh, rich families control what's going on, uh, familiar. But anyway, uh, that's what was going on here. There was the, okay. the rich families are fighting and they're causing bloodshed gang style between the two different factions of the city. And uh, it's not a good thing. Okay, that was a good one. Thank so what you. else do we have? Um, well, this was just, it's a lot of big words. Um, <laughs> Whose misadventured piteous overthrows do it their death, bury their parents' strife. I, I get okay. the bury their parents' strife part. Okay, that because I get rid of the anger and mm -hmm. stuff going on there. Misadventured, piteous overthrows. Okay, misadventure just means unlucky. Oh. Like, it's an adventure that goes badly. Like okay. their adventures in their life just going, going wrong, okay? And piteous actually is implying that we should feel bad for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, we should right? feel bad. They're having a, a terrible, unlucky, bad, feel sorry for them time. And the overthrows okay. are just like, over like think about like um 
you know, exaggerated emotional times, the overthrows, the, okay. uh, the, just um, the struggles. Oh, yeah, I love that. The struggles. Okay. So okay. I did have another one, if you're okay with that. What does death marked with the K? It's M-A-R-K apostrophe D. That looks mm. weird. Okay. Anything that has that apostrophe D is um, missing the E that you would have in an E-D word that is past tense. And that's because in the time of Shakespeare, when, um, especially in poetic language, when they weren't kind of slurring their words or rushing through things, they pronounced the E-D. So that would be like the word marked, E-D, marked, would be marked. And so in order to fit the poetry here, Shakespeare took out the syllable, like most people did in, in language then. They were like starting to lose that syllable. And so it, death marked would be understood to mean death market. Mm. Yeah. So for a long time, it would be the ED would be pronounced. And in this play, whenever there isn't the apostrophe, it is pronounced. So we're going to try to read it that way. Um, but if the apostrophe is there, just imagine it's still that past tense ED word. Okay. So, so death, death marked means that, you know, they were doomed. And then star crossed. Star crossed. And thing. that's kind of more like astrology, basically. They really believed a lot in fate and about how the stars were telling you what was gonna happen in your life. And so they really thought that these two were meant to be together because it was in their stars and also kind of in a bad way. Like they're star crossed, but not like, like star meshed. <laughs> or like yeah. star like they're gonna like ex intersect and it's not gonna Slightly. go well. Um, yeah, it's not a good thing. So to, let's just sum it up then. We got two households, both alike in dignity, and let's just call that social class, okay? okay. And they're in Verona, which is a, a city in Italy. It's a real city, even though this is a fictional story, although they say that could have some basis in fact. And it was based on a story much older than Shakespeare's story because he never really did anything original. He kind of found nice stories Adapted. he liked, and then he turned them into fun things. And the reason this one... Uh, persist to this day is because Shakespeare um, actually created realistic characters we could relate to, including women that we could relate to. And I have a theory that maybe he was one of the first guys to really do that. And that's why he's still interesting Sticking today. Yeah, yeah. As we will find out when we meet Julia, because she's actually kind of interesting and smart. Um, so from ancient grudge, these guys have had a grudge for a very long time. So long, we're calling it ancient. Uh, but this broke to new mutiny. And if you've thought about the word mutiny, nobody asked about that. That's oh, a good yeah, one too. I did have it underlined, but I didn't ask. Yeah. Mostly we hear about that like pirates, that yeah. mutiny and they overturn the rule of the ship. Anyway, mutiny is where you kind of, um, overturn the, the, the rulership. You fight, you bring up a fight. So they were having just a grudge. Now they're having a fight and they are, um, making uh, their civil hands unclean with civil blood. And then it jumps to the part about the um, fourth, the fatal loins. I'm, su I'm surprised you guys didn't ask about fatal loins. Oh, loins. I, Is that, what does that mean? Was, does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, usually when you think of loins, you think about like what nice cut of meat you could buy. So you could have like a steak or something. And that's if, not what I mean. And if, you live in, if you live in Mossy Rock, you probably have a cow. And you might, might, this is different. These loins are like the, the baby making parts. And um, so from the fatal, meaning Yay. deadly, yeah, the deadly baby making parts of these two enemies, here come these two kids, which means they mm. gave birth to them. And it's just, I guess, a very poetic way of saying that they made these babies. And now these babies doomed are baby makers. Yeah, they're doomed to fall <laughs> in love and have a terrible time of it. And uh, it's the only thing, though. It was the only thing that would stop the parents from fighting. And that's what that whole continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's and not could remove. So it's like they were star-crossed to be really an example for their parents. Yeah. Like they're the, they are the bad thing that has to happen in order for this feud to start. Right. Like their death was a lesson. Lame. It, yeah. <sighs> that sucks um, to be They should have just stopped Julia. fighting. That's but awful. they didn't. So this is what had to happen. And so if you didn't get it out of the course, which by the way, you probably should have because really we just told you a little story, but if you didn't get it from that, the end of this, the couplet at the end where the two lines rhyme, like we learned in our poetry unit, it says, the witch, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend. 
So if you didn't understand from just this little introduction, if you listen to and watch all these videos, you will understand the whole play and everything that went down. Oh, you know, another thing I want to ask about just real quick before you go on is this, this line here that says, um, is now the two hours traffic of our stage. Are they literally speaking to the, the audience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is completely breaking the fourth wall, which means talking directly to the audience about how, Hey guys, listen, Hey, Okay, here's this, here's the whole plot. No, oh, you didn't get that. Okay, fine. Okay, you're probably stupid, but just stand there. <laughs> That's what the chorus said. Not her. Stand there for three hours, and, and we'll we are gonna show you it all. We're gonna act it out for you because obviously you need that. So, so That's in so my pre-reading notes, just poor folks. In my yes, pre-reading notes, then could I actually just say something like? Um, uh, two children were born of like opposing families mm -hmm. and be because they fell in love and ultimately died the families learned a lesson and stopped fighting mm -hmm. yeah and one thing that's kind of important to that like, it really starts out like jumps in with the two households both alike in dignity that's important it's not like a poor kid and a rich kid it, it, there isn't like a built-in conflict they're the same nationality the same social class there isn't a built-in conflict other than just the hatred of their two, right. their families. Oh, so dumb. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they have to die for yes. it. Yes. Okay. Well. All right. Now, Spoilers. notice here as we move into the rest of scene one that you have uh, words and definitions here. And, and you guys have already pointed out a couple that you could write down. Um, scene one's long enough that you're probably going to see quite a few more. Mm. While you're working through this, you want to write down at least five of the words that you found challenging. And then you, at some point in time, whether you figure it out through the context of the text or you look it up because you're using some online references that they give you the definitions, some of the dual text resources that were sent out to you with your um, learning packets, those are great for looking at um, what things mean as you go. So you can write it down if you've got a resource like that, or you can actually use a, um, a dictionary um, on your phone or in real life and look it up and write it down. So that's a really good way to just enrich your reading and learn um, more vocabulary as you go. So really choose the ones that you're confused by, not ones that you're like, oh, that's a long word. She thinks I don't know that. No, actually pick one that you don't know and, and try to make more meaning out of it as you go. Also, you're going to want to take note of each of these characters as they come up. Now, we've gone through on this one and kind of laid out who's going to read whom in the first scene. Uh, but as you can see, there's quite a few. And all you're going to do is just write one sentence about what did that character do in the story? What did they do to add to the plot? And then um, at this little section here will just be a short summary of it. We're going to work on that at the end of the scene and give you an example. And down here would be any questions that came up. And there, a good thing that you might be able to do here is either email or um, send in some way a, a question if you actually need to know more about what happened in the scene if you don't understand from the reading and the discussion. Okay. Should they send an email to me or to you? Uh, to me. Okay. Or, or you. I was just checking. Or, I don't know. I was checking. Fiona. I mean, Fiona? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to forward it to her. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's might as right. skip a step. Right. Okay. All right. Scene oh one. Gosh. Verona. I'm nervous. A public place. Hmm. Oh, you're going to do all of the stage directions. I, I Is that did. what those are called? Those are called stage directions. Oh, in the italics? They're in italics. <laughs> That's not dialogue? Not dialogue. Oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so right. glad we had that discussion. Gregory, oh my word, we'll not carry coals. No, for then we would be colliers. I mean, and we be in collar. We'll draw. I, while you live, draw your neck out of the collar. I strike quickly, being moved. Let's stop for a second. All that collars, colliers, call, coal, cock. Okay. People in this time period, in Elizabethan England, loved words. They didn't have phones. They didn't have games they played constantly. They were actually speaking to each other all the time. And so they thought they were really funny when they could make puns. Puns were hilarious to them. And so this entire section starts out with kind of low humor using puns with these two really stupid guys talking to each other about coal, carrying coal. So that makes you a collier because that was a person who literally carried coal, coal, going to Collier's basket. And then the collar, because it sounds like it, and that would make you a slave if you were wearing a collar, 
and it is in color the one that's spelled c-h-o-l-e-r means anger and what he's trying to say is like oh we're not going to be the ones who carry a grudge like our like our our leaders and then then they're like no because blah 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 anyway yeah they do carry a grudge and they're going to continue to tell you more about that but thou are not quickly moved to strike a dog of the house of montague moves me to move is to stir and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runnest away. A dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montagues. Okay, so we're gonna pause again. Uh, that's gonna happen a lot, so don't get too much. Oh, um, so what's happening here is they're, they're just egging each other on, like boys might do. And he's saying, I am moved to blah, blah, He's like, yeah, you're moved because you will run away. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then it gets into this part about the wall thing. And, um, one of the things about medieval streets is that if you were closer to the wall, you were less close to the middle of the street, which is where the sewage ran. And also, if you're closer to the wall, you're less likely to have sewage dumped on your head because it was coming out the top story windows and stuff out into the sewage that, that was just way, going down the street. Please. This may be shocking to you, but sewers aren't that old of a concept, but roads have been around long enough to carry the sewage downhill wherever you were. Okay, so get away from the middle of the street because first of all, there's traffic and there's sewage and you wanna get close to the wall. So if you had privilege, if you were a lady in a fancy dress, if you were older and respected, you were given the wall and the people would go around you. If they were younger and able to defend themselves or jump out of the mud puddles or whatever, they would let other people take the wall. So as you're thinking about this one, as you're talking about, I would take the wall or I push them to the wall or whatever. That's why. Okay, continue. Okay. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest go to the wall. True, and therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. Okay, so Samson's a really disgusting jerk. Sorry. Uh, what Samson is saying here is that, you know, if he comes across somebody from the Montagues, uh, if it's a guy, he's going to shove him away from the wall because... Samson's better than him and he gets to have the wall. And if it's a girl, he's going to shove her to the wall because he's probably being very inappropriate. Yeah, he's being really inappropriate about the women of the Montagues too. Yeah. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Tis all one. Oh, and if you're, if you're using the edited copy, by the way, and you probably are if you're in my class, there's a little dot, dot, dot in parentheses. Every time you see the dot, dot, dot in parentheses, that means there's been a chunk taken out of this text. This text was um, altered initially to be uh, a play performed by high school students. There's not a lot taken out, but there is some taken out, and that's what it means. So there are many different versions of Romeo and Juliet online and elsewhere, and they don't all match. Names are spelled differently, things are different, okay? When you see that in this text, that means that something's been cut and don't worry about it, the meaning is still all there. Sorry. Draw thy tool, here comes two of the house of the Montagues. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. Okay, so this is a high school class, right? You understand that tool and naked weapon are supposed to be funny, right? <laughs> it's, I mean, no. It's true. Okay, that kind of humor was big then too. And it's all I throughout mean, this whole play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, sorry. Sorry. Uh, how? Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. Oh, my pen. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. I'm Turning fighting. pages is very dramatic. It is. I don't know where it went. No, me. Mary, I fear thee. Okay, I don't need it. <laughs> <clears throat> Let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. <clears throat> I will frown as I pass by and let them take it as they will. <laughs> as they list, sorry. Nay, as they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. Yeah. Somebody? Really rude. As a matter of fact, that was probably really bad. We'll probably have to blur that. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. So thumb biting is really just like flipping like, somebody yeah. off. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm now I'm over. Okay. Do you? Bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? That's oh, me. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. You <laughs> do you quarrel? I, 
do you quarrel, sir? <laughs> quarrel, sir? No, sir. Mm, if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a... Sorry, that was a dog. <laughs> I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir... Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie. <gasps> Draw if you be men. Gregory, remember thy swashing blow. They fight. <laughs> we could have acted that out. You know? <laughs> they fight. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Oh, okay. I have no no tool. Okay, and then <laughs> they fight, and then Benvolio enters. Now, feel this. <laughs> Benvolio. Go. Heart, fools. Uh, put up your swords. You know not what you do. Okay, so Benvolio beats down their swords, but then Tybalt enters. What art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. <laughs> I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it to part these men with me. What, drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues and thee. Have at thee, coward. Okay, so it's really important to point oh. out, this okay, they're, as this. they're fighting, um, that these two are cousins of each of the households. So Tybalt oh, shoot. is one of, is the Capulet cousin, and Benvolio is the Montague cousin, and they, they um, actually kind of signify two very opposite things. Tybalt is the fiery, warlike, warmongering <laughs> jerk of the Capulet side, whereas Benvolio, whose name starts with Bene, which means good. I tell is, all of them that too. Yeah, well, it's true. So, so that he's the benevolent one. He's the good guy, and he always is a truth teller too. And he's always trying to stop fights. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not very good at it, because everybody dies <laughs> at the end. Not Benvolio. He doesn't. Because <laughs> he's, <good. laughs> he's a good guy. But anyway, spoiler alert. Oh wait, you're supposed to say that first. But anyway, and they fight. Mm. Ting tong, ting tong. And oh. the citizens come in. <gasps> Bunches of them. Clubs, bills, and partisans, strike, beat them down. Down with the Capulets. Oh, that's you. Down with the Capulets. <sighs> down with the Montagues. Uh, oh. Capulet and Lady Capulet enter. What noise is this? Give me thy, my longsword, ho. <laughs> okay, it's wait. Not, no. It's not it's that. It's not that. Okay, ho. <laughs> No. Today, if you were actually going to call Lady Capulet a hoe and tell her to go get your longsword, mm. that would be an abbreviation for the word whore, which has a lot of letters in it. Yeah. And therefore, you'd have like an apostrophe or something. And it just went, mm. no. What he's really saying here is, give, hey, give me my longsword. Hey. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. He's not really calling his wife a hoe. No. Yeah. Well, let's do it again. Yeah. Let's oh, let's do it. Uh, what noise is this? Is that the voice I used? Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> what noise is this? Give me my longsword. Oh, a crutch, a crutch. Why call you for a sword? A sword, I say. Old Montague has come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Oh, no. Fl flip. Now the Montagues come right. in. Lord and Lady Montague. Thou villain Capulet, hold me not. Let me go. Thou shalt not stir a foot to seek a foe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's so special. Let's, let's recap yeah. here. Two servants of the house of Capulet are just mm -hmm. talking a bunch of garbage about the Montagues and kind of ready for a fight, like egging each other on for it. Some Montagues come into the picture, and it's like Abram and some other guys or whatever. And then, then so the Capulets pick a fight with him because they see that they've got some backup coming. Bambolio and Tybalt arrive on the scene, and instead of it getting better, it gets worse. It gets into a bigger fight to the point where people are coming from all over the town, including Lord Capulet and Lord Montague and their wives who try to hold them back, just sort of. And there's this huge fight. And the citizens are yelling at both of them to stop. And then yeah. here comes the prince. And the prince is the guy who's in charge of everybody, and he's pretty much had enough. And so this speech really is really integral because it sets a lot of the uh, plot into motion. So be paying attention because it also gives us a clue as to how this all got started. Okay, here we go. This is Prince Aeschylus. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor stained steel, will they not hear? What ho! You men, you beasts that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. 
on pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by the old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands as old, cankered with peace, to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. He's sassy. Now let's break it down, though. He's like, <laughs> stop. Everybody's yeah. bleeding. Don't. You keep doing this three times. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And it's all over an airy word. That's meaningless. Oh, that's right. And if you do it again, I'm killing you. I'm killing you. And I'm not done talking about this. You, Capulet, you come with me. He's like the principal saying, you to the office right now. Not you, because I don't want you to fight in my office. Okay? He calls Capulet now. You're going to get it talking to. Montague, you come later. I'm going to talk to you later. Probably Montague's the better behaved kid. He's more likely to come later. Capulet needs an escort. <laughs> they're both going to get it talking to, and they've both been threatened with death. If there's any more fighting, it needs to stop. And he's serious. So you should... A lot of cool words in this one, too. Yeah, did, you have, did you have one you want to Yeah, about? well, a couple, actually, if you don't mind. Um, what does um, pernicious mm. mean? Pernicious rage. The fire of your pernicious rage. What do you rage. think it means? Um, uh, that quench. Let's see, beast. That quench the fire of your pernicious, pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your... Mm. So it feels like he's saying that he, well, he's calling them beasts first off, first off. Mm -hmm. So there you have like this ridiculous anger within them. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all the only thing they're using more, like they're using blood to quench it. And that's stupid. Mm -hmm. So ridiculous is what I've. That's or, pretty good. That's yeah. actually pretty good. Pernicious is like kind of a over the top. Um, I want to say that the word consuming. that comes to like her, permeating like yeah it, it, yeah it, it envelops it um yeah it's all consuming oh yeah consuming. all consuming that's yeah. Good yeah and then it turns out mm -hmm. to be just dumb it's just mm -hmm. dumb okay it's dumb that was the thing they you, should stop did you have something too fiona uh, like uh what are profaners well I to profane like something is to um uh ruin it in a bad way like that's what profanity is about like when somebody says that that's profanity, that means that you're doing something profane. You're kind of like um, uh, uh, dirtying something. And that's why it's like dirty words of profanity. When you dirty something and you, you ruin it in a certain sense. And so he's saying that neighbor stained steel, those are swords that have your neighbor's blood on it. You profaners, yeah. you know, that's, that's a wrong thing to do. You're making it nasty. You're making it awful. And so, um, yeah. What about um, cankered? Now, I mean, I, I think it's pretty common to have like a canker sore. Like that's the mm -hmm. thing people might know what that is, is like um, something painful yeah. or, you know, that doesn't belong. So he's talking about how he, the people of the town are uh, having to use their, their sword hands that had been for so long peaceful that it would be almost like you don't have your calluses, oh, right? To use the, yeah. yeah, but they're cankered with peace. Like so we've been peaceful for so long. It's your canker of hate. Your growing sore of hatefulness mm -hmm. is actually Slitting. forcing our, our people to, to um, use their peaceful hands in warlike action. Mm -hmm. And then when it says down at the bottom, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. But free, so it, it, it sort of describes what it is, but free to, to old Freetown, is that simply like the name, like their courthouse or like uh, the government like building? The center of town or whatever. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's nothing yeah. much, much, much more that you can say to that. Okay. Yeah. Just come to, come like to my, preference. come to my place. <laughs> okay. Think of it as the principal's office. Oh, I love that. He is very much like the principal. Poor guy. He is. Yeah. He's the prince. Okay. 
the scene is not over. It feels a bit like it should be. And if I were talking to Shakespeare, I would have actually told him to end the scene on that because it's a very high, high point. I don't know. I'm still, here's what I'm thinking about that though. Is like, if you imagine being like the groundlings, the people on the floor of the theater, right? That this, that really would have taken us just a couple of minutes. So I have a feeling that he's like first scene let's just give them a bunch well i did I, you know well, here's i have a theory about that too very similar yeah is that um some girl in elizabethan england wanted to go to a play yeah about romance <laughs> and so she talks her boyfriend into um, taking her to this play yeah 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 and and he's like oh, i'm gonna hate this but then it's, it's all like, like dumb these guys with their dirty fights. jokes and then there's violence yeah and he's like, that is cool. Yeah, it is really, yeah. So I feel like that's where they were going with oh. that. They were starting it out with something that would be a little bit for well, everybody. Right, right. This is a real popcorn show at this point. I think you know? you're right. But then, you know, and we have to introduce, you know, at least one of the main characters in the first mm -hmm. scene. And we haven't done that yet. Yeah. So maybe that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We are going to meet a new character. His name's Romeo. Not he's yet. in the title. This is just this guy. Yeah. All right. But first, we have the Montagues uh, who get left behind because they aren't called to the principal's office yet. Right. And uh, here we go. Go ahead, Lord. <sighs> who set this ancient quarrel new approach? Speak, Benvolio. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary, mm -hmm. and yours close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them in the dis... In in the instant came the fiery Tybalt with her, oh, his sword, I'm going to guess. It says her. It, it does. does say her. You might find some of those typos in there. Because <laughs> when this was edited, it was, uh, Tybalt's some of the genders were switched. Yeah. It's not like that all the way through, only mm -hmm. in the places where it didn't get caught. Uh, so, the fiery Tybalt with his sword prepared, which as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds. <laughs> Who nothing hurt with all hissed his. <laughs> what? What? Sorry. It's just a fart joke. A okay. Fart. Oh, cut the winds. Don't worry about it. Who nothing hurt with all hissed he in scorn. While we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more and fought on part and part, till the prince came who parted either part. Mm. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Oh, right, glad I am. He was not at the spray. Yes, I was leading Montague earlier. Okay. And she just has a one line. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of Sycamore, that westward rooteth from the city's side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made but he was ware of me and stole into the covert of the, wood, of the wood. I, measuring his affections by my own, that most were busied when they were, whoa, whoa, sorry, that most were busied when they are most alone, pursued my humor not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Let's pause for a second. Let's think about what's yeah. Romeo doing here. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't, okay, so, he's avoiding yeah, he's avo he doesn't want to be yeah. social, he's probably thinking, My right, guess. now, now Benvolio's his friend and his cousin, they're, right. they know each other, they're close, and both of them are moody teenage boys, apparently, because yes. they're just wandering around in the early morning, yes. but avoiding talking to one another. Yes, I mean, even, I mean, so well, Benvolio I mean, had a trouble. going to talk to him, but then he didn't look like he was looking to talk, well, so. well, Benvolio does say you that leave, we both. You, la you leave a friend yeah. alone uh -huh. to to brood I but guess. Uh, he had a troubled mind as well and yeah. that's what drove him yeah. drave drove him to to go yeah. i think that, that kind of speaks to uh, shakespeare's opinion of boys at mm -hmm. that stage in their life that sometimes they can be a little bit just, you know mm -hmm. need their time. Need time. Need some time anytime um and so it wasn't i mean benville you didn't think it was weird no mm -hmm. just like left him alone yeah all right mm -hmm. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But away from the light steals home my heavy son, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks far daylight out, 
and makes himself an artificial knight. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel made the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affections counselor, is to himself. I will not say how true, but to himself, so secret and so close, so far from sounding and discovery, as is the bud bit with an envious worm, ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air, or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. Oh, I see Romeo showing up right <gasps> now. See where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay to true or to hear true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. They leave. When you see the word exunt <laughs> instead yeah. of exit, that means yeah. a multiple exit. Like more than one person exited. Yeah. Apparently, they left. It used to be they exunted. <laughs> they exunted. Bless I don't know, you. I've never heard that. Gesundheit. Exunted. But anyway, that's what that means. Okay. okay. Uh, good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ay, me, said hours seem long. <sighs> Is that my father that went in so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that, which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough and proof. Okay, what is he? Gentle in his view. Think, as we go through these lines, about what um, in mythology love was personified as, okay? Mm -hmm. What person personified love in mythology because we're talking about it okay here we go alas that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will cupid is shown with with a um, blindfold on a lot and a diaper but that's not the point <laughs> <laughs> Love is blind, and that's a really, that's a big, that's a big important theme. No, the diaper is for a different reason. I merged. I hit Sorry. I think Cupid was actually naked, but. Um, but then they had to put something. Yeah, in because you don't want to see that. Modernity. Yeah. So the blindfold, however, is really important symbolism, though, because love sometimes seems to be blind. And a lot of times people don't understand how love happens. Maybe it happens really quickly or in unlikely places. And that's really an important theme in this, um, that they really believed love wasn't something that you got to make a good, solid choice using your eyes. They felt it was something that just came from here, whether you wanted it to be or not. Okay. All right. Uh, where shall we dine? And then he sees like leftovers of the battle or something at this point, because at first he's like, oh, I'm sad and love and all that. Uh, oh, I'm hungry. You want to go have lunch? And he's like, oh, me. What well, Frey was here. Oh, yet tell me not, for I've heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, oh brawling love, oh loving hate, oh anything of nothing first create, oh heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming well forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep that is not what it is, this love feel I that feel no love in this. No. So he's using all these things that are opposites because he's like showing the like dichotomy. That's a big word for you. Between um, love and hate and happiness and unhappiness and all these things that are opposites of each other. So he's like, I'm sad because love and oh gosh, my family's been fighting again and this sucks. So he's really super depressed and he's getting really gloomy and he notices as he's talking that his cousin friend is laughing at him. Maybe not out loud, but obviously amused by Romeo's deep, dark depression moment, okay? So he says, does thou not laugh? No, cause I rather weep. 
good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Oh, why, such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. He's saying that I am the one who's feeling bad. And you feeling bad for me just makes me feel worse. He's such so a teenager. <laughs> such a teenager. Sorry. Farewell, my cuz. Uh, soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. <sighs> Tut, I've lost myself. I'm not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? <sighs> what, shall I groan and tell thee? Grown? Why no? But sadly, tell me who. <sighs> Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. Ah, oh, word ill urged to one that is so ill. It's like, why are you making me do this? You're just making it worse. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed that you loved. A right good <laughs> mark then. And she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. Well, in that hit you miss, she'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit. And in strong proof of chastity, well armed, from love's weak childish bow, she lives unharmed. Then she hath sworn that she will live chaste? She hath, and in that oh, sparing. Oh, she will still live chaste. Yeah. She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. <laughs> She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead, but live to tell it now. Okay, so first of all, we know who Cupid is, and we know that she's saved from Cupid's arrow because of she has Diane's wit. Now, Diane was the goddess of the moon, the goddess of the hunt, but also the goddess who symbolized virginity. And so this was saying that um, his proposed um, girlfriend here, the girl that he loved, doesn't love him back because she's just not into that. She's more like religious and pure and doesn't want to ever, you know, do anything... Any, none of that. None of that. And it makes him sad. Dang it. He's really sad. <laughs> Is it me? Yes. Uh, oh, oh, uh, wait, where? Oh, no, you had one more oh, line. I did? What? Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. She, has forsworn, she has forsworn to love. And in that vow, do I live dead to live to tell it now? Kills me. <laughs> Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other oh, beauties. Super important line. Other fish in the sea. Right. If you have a helpless, hopeless interest in somebody who has does not love you, your friend, your good friend might say, like, 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 like. Of those girls <laughs> yeah they're kind of cute and a normal person <laughs> would be like oh that's a good idea romeo not normal. no no mm -mm. um tis the way to call hers exquisite he that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost show me a mistress that is passing fair that doth her beauty serve but as a note I hate that it's on that other page. Yeah, where I may read who passed that passing fair. He's just saying that if he sees a pretty girl, he's just going to think about how pretty er she is. Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. Exunt. I mean, that they leave. They leave. So, isn't it interesting that we never hear the name? of the woman he oh i know what it is you want to know what it is i i know as well do you reveal that now no i think that's great no because we'll find it out and some people might think it's somebody else it's, it's, don't tell but you should be thinking about it's not juliet ah it's not Juliet. Because I know this is called Romeo and Juliet. And you'd think that at yeah. the beginning, this kid who's like desperately in love and his name is Romeo, yeah. that the person he's in love with is Juliet, but it's not. It's not. Not. At all. Because mm -mm, his friend's right. Yeah. All you have to do is examine other beauties and Word. stuff happens. It's true. So we're at end of uh, scene one. Yeah, yeah. So we have to talk about the diary. So um, hopefully you have your pre-reading notes already. Hopefully you found a few words to write into your words for definitions because we did talk about a few and right. you can use some of the ones like mm -hmm. pernicious. 
-hmm. that you pulled up. Um, ho, if you're concerned. Hey. Uh, mm, yeah. Um, so character notes, Samson. What did Samson do? Oh, you talk like he the big on, talk. Oh, no, no, wait. He got egged on by Gregory. Wait, yeah. Yeah, Gregory yeah. is like. Gregory egged him on. It. So he's. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. But they And were, they started a fight. They did. And is it Samson the biter of thumbs? Yes. Yes. He is the biter yeah. of thumbs. Okay. Which is pretty famous. Um, okay, what about Gregory then? He's the one who egged on Samson. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was calling him a coward and then practically head behind Samson. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> totally true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also they are of House Montague. No. I mean... Capulet. Capulet, yes, right. Because right, Montague, that's right, because the, yeah. the, the other now, fam come. Right. Now, if you watch um, the... Uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio version of the film it's confusing because they flip flop some of these roles at the beginning and uh, make give these these lines out differently so be aware of that if you watch that one um, the old Zeffirelli film and most of the the versions will will have it the, the right way but um, not that there's a wrong way or a right way and what's Shakespeare gonna do he's pretty dead but um, Mostly. in this case Samson and Gregory are Capulets in the regular right. text okay Abram is not he's a Montague and so what did he do? He got offended. He got offended. He did. They meant well, to offend him. That's true. Put their thumb at him. Right. That is true. Okay. But and Ben Volio, what did he do? He did quite a bit. He's a keeper of the peace, but he also, um, he uh, explained to Montague that Romeo mm -hmm. was out being melodramatic in the woods mm -hmm. and he let him be. And then he also tried to get Romeo to talk about his problems and who he loves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Benvolio was like the star of the show. He's like a bestie. Yeah. He is. He's a he bestie. Is. I'm going to put Romeo's bestie. Oh, okay. And, but cousin too. Cousin bestie. It's important bestie cousin. Related. It's his yeah. bestie cousin. Um, so what about Tibble? He's a hothead. Hothead. He hates all Montagues. He does. That, so it's important to note he's a yes. Capulet. He's uh, cousin Capulet. to Juliet. He hates the word peace yes. as he hates hell, all Montagues, and thee. And by thee, he meant Benvolio. That is true. And by the way, let's talk about thee. Thee and thou and all of those things. They're in it's here important. because of the peace. time period that it was written, just like the King James Version of the Bible was written in a similar time period. So if you go to a, a church where they use the these and thous when they're reading scripture, that is exactly because of the time period where they still used both formal and informal forms of the, the pronoun you. So you and thou or thee are the same thing. So if you speak Spanish and you know the difference between usted and tu, that is exactly how it used to be in English. There, there was the formal you, like usted, and there was the informal thou, like two. So those, it still, it still works. It still actually means the same thing. But um, we started being formal in our language all the time. We gave up the these and thous, which were reserved for people that we were affectionate with or for our relationship with God, because in the Bible, um, we use these and thous between God and man. It's kind of an interesting thing. But for the formality, we kind of got stuck in the formal setting, whereas most other languages get stuck in more casual settings. But that's what the these and thous are about. And just hang on, it'll start to come a lot more naturally as it, as it, as it progresses. All right, where are we now? We've got um, the Caps and the Montagues. Uh, we didn't see a lot of the Capulets who just got called into the battle, right? Right, okay. right? And Lady Montague tried to stop Lord Capulet. That's kind of important. Both of the women yeah. tried. Mm -hmm. A little. A little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the two Montagues, there's a little bit more because they stay behind and they talk about their son's depression. That's, that's right. And Montague yeah. apparently has tried to figure out what's yeah. going on with Romeo, but Romeo's having really none of it. He's just being super mm -hmm. evil about it. He's just pulling himself aside from everybody. And creating, and like darkness in his own yes. room mm -hmm. so that he's, it's always night it's like it's hard you know depression's real it is real i suffer from depression i tell your kids all the time yeah so uh it's not unusual for a young man or young girl to um feel like they found the love of their life and have that feeling not be returned and think mm -hmm. that it's the end mm -hmm. because they're young and in their world it's the worst thing that's ever happened indeed and that's what, that's what Romeo was experiencing at the beginning of the play. 
not only is he in a kind of unhappy situation in family life, he doesn't sound like he's very happy at all Agreed. about the feud between the families. He's really annoyed by that. And they just like on top of the fact that he's having personal problems, yeah. you know, so he's kind of a miserable boy at the moment. And he, Agreed. he, he needs something to cheer him up. Oh, ah, hmm. there it is. Huh? Mm -hmm. Plot knows, but he's going to die. But. Oh, and then the prince, prince, prince is like the principal. Mm -hmm. and he's the ruler of the, 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 the city. Yeah, right? yeah. And he's really he's mad. mad. He's super mad. He's done. And he's he separates had enough. the lead, He separates the them. He the talks article. to each of them. He gives them the like the the um the ruling that yeah it, it's going to be their lives next. Right. They're older dudes and they're in charge of this. They should be able to get their people to stop fighting. I love it. Okay. And then Romeo, of course, is a Montague. And he's a depressed boy, who's in love. He's in love with somebody who does. But he has a good back. friend slash cousin. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is your plot notes. If you have any questions or things that you need to know more about, you write them in the bottom. And you email Fiona. And you email Fiona. We will then forward it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Or you just email me. Et voila, do it now. Uh, let's, yes, oh. let's, and, and while you were looking at that, um, it's a shortish scene. Um, in the pre talk, we're just looking, it's going to be Capulet Paris and a servant. Uh, what do you think? We don't know who Paris is unless we look back at the cast list. And I'll I'll give you a hint. He's um, a cousin of the prince, and he's talking to Capulet. What would they have to talk about with your knowledge so far? Oh. What would the cousin of the prince be saying to Capulet? Oh, they aren't going out. What are you doing with your eyebrows? It's not like that. It's foreshadowing. You're foreshadowing with your eyebrows. Well, is that eyeshadowing? <laughs> oh my god that's brilliant i was just eyeshadowing you heard it here first yes so without having so so the relationship between paris and the capulets right now that's what we're talking about yes why no talking wait about? why is paris talking to Capulet? why why yeah i don't know right. we're gonna find well, out actually i do I mean, know i know well i, I, I do too. too you do mm -hmm. all three of us know yeah let's read it okay but first of all if you're gonna write something in there though like remember where capulet just came back from where did he come back from just now where did he go yeah. Freetown, where he was talking to yes, the prince, oldest. and he was yeah, because he was learning about his possible fate if these yeah, things happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that might be a topic. Yeah. Yes. And remember, Paris is related to the prince, and it's not a city in France. It is. It, it is, this but this is not. just a guy named Paris, and it's not Paris Hilton, who's a no. now aging millionaires hotel. No aging. I have not heard that description she's aged yes but no it's not a, just a girl's <laughs> name it's a boy's name I mean, oh um and then are we okay. casting this yeah then? Uh, so we need a capulet yeah. she gets to be capulet remember because i was capulet and i changed things up okay you're capulet okay. sure yeah. okay yeah. so that, that makes you I'm paris okay. and i'll you be bitch. the servant but then are we going to keep our same benvolio and, oh. and romeo i are we? think we would then do you want no because servant is in and out of all of this too so oh. Benvolio. so you come I back in as servant okay because paris is gone so i'll be paris okay oh wait i'll be paris and romeo and you're the servant this shouldn't wait, be as hard as it is so hard you're capulet and benvolio i'm capulet and ben, benvolio. You were benvolio before i was gonna be paris i was benvolio before okay so she, oh, she can be benvolio that? again and you can be capulet again no, I was never Capulet. Okay, I quit. Fiona was Capulet. I was Capulet. And Benvolio. Fiona's going to read the whole scene. <laughs> <laughs> so how about if I'm, Got it. I'm Capulet, Fiona's Paris. Okay. You are Paris. the servant. And, and I'm then, Benvolio then? And then you guys are Benvolio. Okay, I'm just a servant. And you guys are the two pairs. And then, okay, yes. I'm Benvolio. And, I, and then I'm, I'm, I'm Romeo. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So when you're at home and you're, you're picking who's going to read with you, because you're definitely going to get your family to read with you, right? Best. Cool. It's a great way to learn. Take turns taking the bigger roles. Don't hog it. <laughs> Do you find that's a problem? In some cases. I guess it's a couple. Or of uh, don't hog the small roles. Don't hog the small roles. Because <laughs> that also, that's the deal. Okay. All right. Scene two. A street. <gasps> Enter Capulet Paris and a servant. But Montague is bound as well as I, in penalty alike. And tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived at odds so long. Mm. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? 
But saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than her are happy mothers made. And too soon marred are those so early made. The earth hath swallowed all my hopes, but she, she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. Pause for a second. Let's Pause. Talk about, let's talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. This seems a little creepy. It is creepy because they don't like talking about her. Like she's, you know, chattel. She is um, chattel. <laughs> Property in the time period that we're talking about, both the time period that um, Shakespeare is writing and the time period that would have been prior, like in the late Middle Ages, where the story of Romeo and Juliet would have happened. Um, girls, uh, especially upper class girls, weirdly, were really just property of mm -hmm. their of their fathers. Um, women didn't own things unless their husbands died, which happened strangely frequently. Especially as they, he says, I just oh, men again. so old as we to keep. I knew. So he's yeah. like, Paris is like Capulet's age. No, 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 no. He's like, no, 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 no. Montague, he's talking about, good, I'm glad that? you pointed it out. He's talking about Montague and, and Capulet are old. Okay. Uh, okay. Paris okay. is a young man. They talk about him later as being a very gotcha. young man. They also talk about him being hot. He's and very... I need you to understand that as we read this, a lot of people get a negative opinion of Paris, and I'm not really sure where that comes from. Maybe it's this scene, though, because he's asking, He he's interested in Capulet's daughter, who, by the way, is Juliet, the other person in the title. And he is interested in her, not he's never met her so in this time period marriage was more about money and status the upper classes anyway money and status and kind of this ownership of stuff land goods businesses okay and you could get that by tying uh, uh together families like i'll marry your daughter and now we have like a business partnership and i will get your stuff when you die and that's really what Paris is doing here. He's making an alliance with Capulet by saying, you know, um, what about your daughter? I think I would like to marry her. Who is 13. Yeah, well, she's almost 14. And but at the time, I know. I marriages know. weren't that common at that young. And, and this play kind of makes it seem like they are. Okay, and, and Paris says like, oh, women younger than her have children and stuff. And, and Capulet's like, yes, and it doesn't always go well. He says they are often marred by that. That means damaged. So Capulet's like, uh, I don't know. I don't think that maybe you should have babies with a young girl like that because it's bad. So thank you, Capulet, yeah. for that nice, nice little handout for women. For now. For now. For now. Um, so, but really, it wasn't that weird for them. And honestly, even they would marry toddlers off. And I'm not talking about in a weird, like, oh, they had relations way. But they would make alliances yeah, with families yeah. from a very, very young age. And so there might not have been this intent that um, Paris wanted um, Juliet for, like, to be... Lascivious, like, gross nah. reasons. It really was more of a, a monetary um, exchange or just like a status exchange and him being related to the prince that would have been a nice little like you think for capulet, capulet too, like too. yeah right? so it, it's just a deal making that's happening right now it, right. it isn't like a couple perverts talking about a young girl it really wasn't like that back then or i'm sure it was there i'm sure there were sure people that were gross. People have... um but that's not what's happening here it would be really right. more of a normal thing okay let's continue on and see how okay. bad it gets um, and so I had just said my will to her consent is but a part. Um, um, and she agree within her scope of choice lies my consent and their according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love and you among the store. One more most welcome makes my number more. At my poor house, look to behold this night, earth treading stars that make dark heaven light. At my house, hear all, all see, and like her most whose merit most shall be, which on more view of many mine being one, may stand in number, though in reckoning none. 
come, go with me. So pause because you're going to change up who you're talking to here. But, yeah. Um, so what he's saying to Paris, and this is the hook, by the way, this is he's baiting the hook. He's acting like he doesn't want his daughter to marry Paris. But then he's like, wait, come to this exclusive yeah. party. That I'm yeah, having. yeah. Really, if my daughter actually likes you, maybe I uh -huh. could be one of I couldn't her. possibly. She's only Yeah, 13. she's so young. Maybe in a couple of years she likes you. But... So he inv invites Paris over tonight, right now, to a party where there's a bunch of beautiful girls are going to be at the Capulet party. And he's like, and you're going to see all these pretty girls, but you're going to see one, and she's going to be the most beautiful. The stand out. Guess who it is? It's my daughter. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. So that, which is lovely, I guess. I mean, thanks, Dad. There. Yeah. Okay. So then he turns and he now he's talking to the servant. <clears throat> I give him a paper. Go, Sarah. Trudge about through fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say, "My house and welcome on their pleasure stay." Find them out who's okay, and, and Paris and Capulet leave, and they leave this poor servant with a piece of paper. In. Which is funny. I apologize ahead of time because Shakespeare's super rude to servants. They're, he treats the lower classes as if they're stupid, and that's supposed to be funny. A lot of lower class folks came to watch it. They probably thought it was hilarious too. They could maybe relate to some of it. Anyway, he gives a note. A written note to a servant who can't read and this is the little speech of genius things here that he says um, find them out whose names are written here it is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the tailor with his last the fisher with his pencil and the, the painter with his nets but I am sent to find those persons whose names are here written and, and can never find what names the writing person hath here writ I must to the learned in good time. So the servant's saying these things that make zero sense because he's flip-flopping it. Um, so a shoemaker uses a, um, a last to make shoes on and a tailor uses yards to make clothing out of, you see each of those is flip-flop. They're using the thing that the other person uses. He's basically saying, I'm really dumb and can't read. I need to find somebody who can read this for me. And this is how everything goes wrong. So here's the deal, guys. If you don't know how to read, you could cause a terrible tragedy. <laughs> Learn to read. PSA. That is, a, mm -hmm. I think, the main theme of the whole book. Read. Yeah. Illiteracy kills. <laughs> Killed. Like this. Killed. They're Everybody. dead. So many people are dead because of this guy. He did it. He's the killer. Who done it? Mm -hmm. The servant. In the street with a note. Biscuits. It's like Clue, right? <laughs> yeah. This is heavy. I sold it. The end. And goodbye. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The later it gets, the more fun uh, this is going to be. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Okay. Enter Benvolio. Oh. And Romeo. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I wonder what's going to happen. Um, are, do you think we're going to talk about girls again? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Tut. Nah. I thought I was. Uh, Benvolio now, are remember? You, are you? No, you are. Because I, I had marked it before we had changed our mind. Well, Sorry. Well, that last Je page. regret I am now Romeo. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. no I have, I have Romeo attached. marked on this side. Okay. Tut, man, one fire burns out, another's burning. Don't point your tool at me. Her naked weapon is out. <laughs> oh, okay. No. What? <laughs> Sorry. It's a sword. It's... One pain is lessened by another's anguish. <laughs> Thank you. Turn giddy and be hope, hope by backward turning. Uh, one desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thine eye, to thy, to thy eye. I know it should be thine. Should be thine, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally, like don't, 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 don't confuse it. them. Take thou some new infection to thine eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Okay, I love that line. Yeah, you need a new infection. To your eye mm -hmm. like like it, it implies that love is like a disease that you get here like you see something you're like oh yeah i love that we've yeah. and 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 so bimboli was like Let's replace it with another one maybe you know one that likes you <laughs> so there's that no and this is a really great idea and then this line your plantain leaf is excellent for that 
Oh, for what I pray thee? For your broken shin. This usually goes right over the top of everybody's heads here because this is really just it's, it's, it's Elizabethan humor. Um, they didn't have bandages of, no. like we have uh, plantain leaf, like a big banana leaf was used to um, bandage things. Um, it was a really good bandage. It still works if you want to use one. But um, so what he's saying is like, this is actually kind of a funny joke. So Romeo, like, Romeo's <laughs> listening to, to Benvolio's advice. Well, and, your band-aid's great. You know, he's like, you're going to need a bandage. Yeah. For what? For what? what? For this for broken, for the, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm so right then, you. he would kick it, he would have kicked him, right? In the yeah, shins. yeah, yeah. So that's what happens right here is Benvolio's trying to be nice and give advice to Romeo. And Romeo's like, you're going to need a bandage. For what? <laughs> Ow. Kick Ow. Him. Jerk. Why, Romeo, are at the mad? <laughs> Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison. Kept without my food. Whipped and tormented and gotten, good fellow. And God means good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, so when you see that, there's lots of versions of it, but it's just a shortened form of good evening. Okay. Um, Goggy Godden, I pray, sir, can you read? I, mine own fortune and my misery. Which is like totally weird to say to a stranger on the street. <laughs> he can't contain it. Though. I can read my misery. Mm. Whatever. Okay. Um, perhaps you have learned it without book, but I pray, can you read anything you see? I, if I know the letters and the language. You see, honestly, rest your merry. Okay, so the servant is so dumb that he just doesn't understand Romeo, who's being a little cryptic about, like, yeah. he doesn't say, yes, I can read, give me your note, I'll read it to you. He's like, oh, if I know the language, yeah, like, I could read just, it. Okay, so the servant's like, okay, never mind. Yeah, um, um, oh, uh, um, stay, fellow, I can read. Okay, so they give him <clears> the note. <throat> Here is the note. Listen for clues. Hmm. Senor Martino and his wife and daughters, Count Anselm and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow, ooh, the lady widow, mm -hmm. uh, Vertruvio, Senor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, mine uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece, Rosaline, Livia, Signor Valentino, or Valencio, and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio, and the lively Helena. A fair assembly. Whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper, to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. <laughs> you probably should have. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great, rich, Capulet. Um, and if you be not of the house of Montague, I pray you come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. You see what just happened there? That was good. So the servant gives the note that says who all is going to the Capulet party to the Montagues. And then the Montague reads, reads it and he, and he, he emphasizes it. that's her she's it's going to the party mm -hmm. and then Romeo's like well, where's this party and he's like oh at my house i mean you know my <laughs> house. and Romeo's all like, like wait, where yeah it's like uh -huh. the capulets you want to come yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. be not a house of montague yeah 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 because you're I, a montague so don't eyeshadowing again mm-hmm mm -hmm. mm. At this same ancient feast of Capulet, subs the fair Rosaline, whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona, go thither and with unattained eye compare her face with, face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. One fairer than my love? <laughs> The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Strong words and very sweet. You can put that on a note. That'll get a Oh my girl. god, yeah. yeah. Oh, the all-seeing sun never saw her match. Ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tut, you saw her fair, none else being by. Herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scale, yeah, in that crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid. 
that I shall show you shining at this feast, and she shall scant show well that mm. now shows best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Okay, so Benvoli is trying to do something here. Um, he wants to get Romeo out where he sees other girls and how perfect would it be if there's yes, Rosaline, the sorry. girl that doesn't like him back, <laughs> but with a bunch of other girls and they're cuter. Okay, and then he could be like, see, she's even, she's a dog. Okay, go for that one. Mm -hmm. She's pretty and she might like you back. So yeah. Ben volume has got this plan, but there's a flaw in this plan. Can anybody guess what the flaw might be? Um, the Montague's going to a Capula party? Yeah, lots and Where lots there's a Tybalt. We don't know that yet, but it's, it was, it was on the note. It was on the note. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. Oh, and Tybalt's up. Tybalt. What is Tybalt like? Mm -hmm. So that's okay. We have problems a lot. And this is me because that's okay. This is called, shadowing. Yeah, it's called the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, not the the, the brilliant the comedy. Com, like rom com the pool of Romeo. Told us they're gonna die. Yeah, they're gonna it's die. So this it. is how it all gets started, mm -hmm. and it's kind of Benvolio's part a fault, but it's also. Did you say so, part? I said part, and then oh. I said fault, but thank oh. you. Uh, <laughs> okay, it could have been the servant, though, right? Mm. Did this, do you think that the servant knew Romeo? I mean, because no. you don't think so. No. Well, I mean, sir, did like, he say anything gave smart? Gave me this note I can't read. I'm going to wreck your lives. I don't even know what shoemakers do. Oh, no. Can you read? You can? Okay, bye. What? I don't know, but maybe no, you can still anything. recognize faces. I mean, you knew it was Capulet Hardy. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Things to think on. If you played it to where Servant throughout here, he was like Capulet wicked. was like the same guy, and he got to be like yeah. there. <coughs> it could be interesting. Yeah. He could have really been something That's to look at. Maybe we should produce point it. Of view. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. We need to look at the, the reader's diary yes. for that scene. And okay. um, let's see, we've got our pre-reading notes ready to that. Write down some of the words. Did you some see some stuff. words? Let's yeah, just there's... pull one or two out oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sarah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one because it's... Yeah. It says uh, about it. um, servants a lot, or people lo lower than the class mm -hmm. of the person speaking, right? Yeah, I would say, you know, almost like, see it as like the way we use the word dude right now. Dude? Yeah, dude. Do they mm -hmm. use it amongst friends? Or is it? It's more of a, a upper to lower okay. kind of feel to it. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, it's just not a very, I would say it's not particularly respectful. Okay. And then you did say um, uh, that the garden just means um, God give you a good evening, right? And then it it's means. much more literally, or much more clear, I think, in the servants. God, 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 God damn. Yeah, it's like they can't say all the parts of it, and I don't know. Um, so it is like God give you a good evening, and right. eventually people just, just said good evening, uh, but right. it's God give you a good evening. <laughs> Yeah, exactly as she yeah. said. I said it just right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sarah was a really good one, actually. So there's still a few more yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'm treading a couple of times now, too. Mm -hmm. It just means walking. Yeah. yeah. Earth treading. Stars. Earth, because they're stars, but they're yes. on the. Because they're beautiful girls. They're stars. That's hilarious. You know, and one of the things that, that comes up later, too, is that beauty in this time period is, is seen as something bright and shiny. Mm -hmm. You're if you're bright and shiny. And you're beautiful. Oh, it's like another way of looking. Well, at I mean, on the most famous balcony scene. But well, we'll see that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All <clears throat> right. So uh, we write down what each of the people did, what Capulet did. Capulet here. We're just going to kind of rush through this one a little bit. Yeah. Invited he, Paris to come yeah. check out some more of the ladies, knowing his daughter was going to be there. And just like a little psycho, he just got back from being told off by the prince. So he kind of does a little thing about like, we can make this work. Right, right, right. We're going to solve it. Right. Uh, Montague and I are old. Yeah. We, we can keep the peace. We can do this. Totally. Yeah. He's like complying. He came back from the principal's office and said, yeah, I'm not going to fight anymore. No. I don't want to get in trouble. No, no. And I'm going to make any friend of the princess is a friend yeah. of mine. Yeah. And, yeah. And you're a friend of mine and you, you want to date my daughter. Done. Got we'll it. work it out. Come to a party. You'll see she's really cute. So the servant delivered, or, or not delivered, but. Yeah, he. Uh, erroneously yes Ooh, he went up to uh, a montague and had a montague read the guest list of a, of a capular party right 
which seems like a security breach. Yes. And Benvolio is doing what Benvolio does, which is trying to be a good friend to Romeo. He is, yeah. And, and by he, but, breaking into a party. Mm, yeah, oh, they're just having a party crash. An enemy. Oh, it just seems like a bad idea. But, but, good idea, bad place for it. Good idea, Benvolio. Eyeshadowing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, yeah, Romeo. And then Romeo like, mm, fell for it. I'll go. But it's not gonna work. No, nothing's beautiful or than <laughs> Rosaline. Indeed, she's amazing. So that's essentially oh, the plot too, right? Is that? Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if you think of things that um, were not discussed or cleared up here, yeah. you write them in the remember to discuss part. So Fiona, yeah. do you want to be? Oh. Oh, it's Lady Capulet, the nurse, and Julia. So there's three of us. The, uh -huh. So um, whichever. I'll be Lady. I'm fine being Lady. You want to be the nurse, Fiona? I'll be the nurse. Okay, and I you're Julia. Julia. The, so, the young ingenue. That's right. Which is um, theater lady. speak for the young lady. lady. And the gentleman, the young gentleman is called the what? The ingenue. I don't know. I was asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I just put an R in the end of it. That's not even true. Yes. I don't know. No. The young yeah. man. So you're a servant? No, who's the servant? Oh, servants in there too. There's I'll be the servant. the servant too. No, wait. Whoever's like, not right whoever's there. A, yeah, whatever. Who are you? They're all talking at the end. I, it would oh. probably be the nurse would be the most disconnected one. Okay. Okay. So, so Fiona, right. you got the servant. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> all right. I will be interrupting because the nurse's speeches are great. They are great. I love them. Okay. <clears throat> but we haven't met these people. Mm, new people. Well, Lady well, Capulet was there for a second. From O. Okay. But here comes Juliet. She's the other half of the Romeo and Juliet here. Okay. Uh, a room in Capulet's house. Are you reading the stage structure or no? Enter uh, Lady Capulet and the nurse. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. I bade her come. What lamb, what lady bird, God forbid. Where's this girl? What? Juliet? Enter Juliet. How now? Who calls? Your mother. Madam, I'm here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me. Uh, thou's here our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter is of a pretty age. Wait, I can tell her age in two an hour. She's not fourteen. She is not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas Tide? A fortnight and odd days. Ooh, good idea. Lammas Tide. <gasps> right? Do and fortnight. Mm. Um, uh, I don't know. Lammas? This is the first of August. So Lammas Eve, it's like Christmas Eve would be the night before. So First that, of August is when it would be? Is Lammas. Okay. So Lammas Eve is the 31st of July. Okay. Okay. So um, how long is a fortnight? Tw two weeks? Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. So two weeks and uh, some odd oh, days. Oh, so she's like born in the middle in of- In the middle of August. No. Middle of July. July. Yeah. She's like, no, 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 wait. I'm sorry. She's it is. Born she was born in Lima Eve. Oh, I see. So but it's this a is couple weeks place from now. In the middle of July. Before. So she is almost 14. Like, literally. She's almost, yeah. literally there. She almost. could, if she were, like, she'd be totally, like, calling it. Like, she'd be I like, I'm so 14. 14. Yeah. Okay. She's okay. 14. Totally. And it is, but it's very important because now we figured out the time period that this is taking place is in Italy. We know where. And now we know that it is during the middle of the summer. Summertime. Yeah. And that's, that's significant. That makes a difference. Mid July. Right now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. No wonder the wicked hot. Yes. yes. Everything's cranky. It even mentions it. The it they does. talk about it over and over about yeah. how hot it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, see that. Sorry. Okay. That was some eyeshadowing. Okay. I think we can continue now. We now we know when her birthday is. And right. So a fortnight and odd mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even or odd, all of all days in the year, come Lammas time. Oh no, Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls. <laughs> We're of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me, but as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be 14. Okay, I gotta tell you about that. This is actually kind of sad. So mm -hmm. the nurse, um, back in the day, uh, a nurse 
the word nurse actually comes from um, the act of breastfeeding. So nurses in hospitals don't usually breastfeed you. So that's a good thing. But back in the day, <laughs> I'm already sad because just... you don't get breastfed by nurses in the hospital. No, because no, the okay. nurse had milk <laughs> to did. be a nurse. She did. And the reason is that she'd had a baby, Susan, but Susan died because according to her, Susan was too good for me, but she was with God. Okay. So, um, but this was a huge move up in class for the nurse. The nurse would have been, and I think we find out from listening to her talk as we go along here, a fairly low class woman, probably of a farming community, you know, uh, she lost her baby, but she had milk and that kind of gave her the opportunity to be hired by a, a noble household where the mommy didn't want to be a mommy. She wanted to put her gowns and back on and go have parties. And I feel like that may be is what happened with Lady Capulet. She's like, uh, you yeah, know, it's kind of gross. She seems a little yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. So daughter. she got yes. somebody else. Yeah. She's all like, Hey, I need to talk to you alone. No, no, no. Nurse, come back. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, hang out with me. I don't know. I can't Yeah. This, this girl. Ugh. And the nurse and, has been with her since birth. Right. And, and she's even like, oh, you know how old my daughter? Yes, of course I know. I know everything about to the her. hour. Um, but <laughs> the nurse really knows Juliet and loves Juliet and, and held her and breastfed her as a baby and bonded with her. And Lady Capulet went back to being Lady Capulet and let somebody mm -hmm. else be the mommy. And so that's really important in the scene. It's a uh, kind of important culturally too, because um, it, it was possible to be closer to somebody that wasn't your biological mother, just like it is nowadays. It's possible to have a biological parent and a parent who's really the caretaker and the nurse is really the caretaker. And it defines a lot of who Juliet is. Juliet breaks a lot of rules. She doesn't like stick with her family's idea of what's right. And that's really important coming up really soon okay but anyway so that's how the nurse got here is she had a baby that died and she ended up being um a nursemaid um or a wet nurse as it's called for juliet and that's their closeness of their relationship okay uh, on lamas eve at night shall she be 14. that shall she marry i remember it well tis since the earthquake now 11 years of all the days of the year upon that day Sitting in the sun under the dove house wall, my lord and you were then at Mon at Mantua. That's it. Shake, quoth the dove house. What? Quoth? Quoth? Quoth. quoth, quoth. Uh, shake, quoth the do dove house. Twas no need, I trow, to bid me trudge. And since that time it is eleven years. For then she could stand alone, nay, by the rood, she could have run and waddled all about. <laughs> For even the day before, she broke her brow, and then her, and then my husband, God be with his soul, mm. he was a merry man, took up the child. Yes, oh, yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt mm. fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Jewel? And my, and by my holidam, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I, to see now how a jest shall come about. I warrant, I, and I should live a thousand years, I never should forget it. Wilt thou not, Jewel, quoth he. <laughs> and pretty fool, it stinted and said, I. Okay, so we gotta talk about this speech for a second. First of all, part of it has been cut out, and the part that it's cut out is like, uh, that the day of the earthquake, she was also weaning uh, Juliet from breastfeeding. And uh, that was cut out because this was a play put on by teenagers and it was just kind of an uncomfortable thing for people to talk about. And the point, the reason I'm bringing it up is that it's not uncomfortable for the nurse to talk about. I think it's incredibly uncomfortable for Lady Capulet. Mm -hmm. She didn't breastfeed her own child. She didn't want to talk about it either. And this whole scene is Lady Capulet trying to redirect things back into more poetic language and the nurse taking it back down into mm -hmm. like really gritty, uh, personal um, unpleasant to the Lady Capulet kind of topic. So she's like, oh yeah, I remember when I weaned her and she was a toddler and there was that earthquake, remember, and you and the, the Lord were off on a trip somewhere and oh, and the day before she had run around and fell down and knocked her head on something and my, my husband picked her up. And this is actually the funny joke. I love the, the nurse's um, uh, humor here. She talks about how when Juliet was a baby. Think about it this way. Uh, this little toddler was running around and she fell down and she got a big knot on her head. 
And the nurse's husband, who has passed away, unfortunately, poor sad nurse's life, picks up the baby and he tells her as she's crying, right? She's, he says, oh, look at you. Hey, when you get smart, you're going to fall on your backside. And the baby goes, huh, yeah. Okay, so this is hilarious because a crying toddler, first of all, it's hard to get to stop mm -hmm. crying. And this man picked her up and said, you're going to be smart one day and fall on your backside instead, not your head. And the baby went, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and so the nurse thinks this is hilarious. Guess who doesn't think it's hilarious? Lady Kathy. Lady. Interesting. Okay. Enough of this. I pray thee hold thy peace. Yes, madam. Yet I cannot choose but laugh to think it should leave crying and say I. Notice how she doesn't stop. And yet I warned it had been it had upon its brow a bump as big as a young corporal stone, a pearl's knock, uh, and it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, falls upon thy face. <laughs> thou wilt fall backward when thou hast come as to age, wilt thou not jewel? It's doom to doom, said I. <laughs> okay, so she doesn't stop. She tells the whole story again, and then she adds some lovely details, like a bump the size of a cockerel stone. Do you know what a cockerel stone is? It's a chicken testicle. So this woman is like, oh, and it had like a chicken testicle size bump on its head. It's probably not appropriate when you're talking to the lady of the house. I know, but if you're like a farm lady that's and that's how you grew up, you didn't care. And that's how she talks to Julia too. Yeah. She's just very personal and open and, and funny, but crude. Yes. And Lady Capulet's all like, oh, dear. Yeah, oh, the vapors. Oh, dear. Nasty. Don't talk about cockle stones. <sighs> <sighs> And stint thou too. Right? Oh, that's my line. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And stint oh. thou too, nurse. I pray thee, nurse. I say. So then Juliet, no, like Juliet actually it's understands. Like, like oh, I'm trying to mall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Stop. I'm just so proud. Uh, peace. I have done. God mark thee to His grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed, and I might live to see the be married once. I have my wish. She's very proud of Julia. Mary, says. that Mary is the very theme came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady. Lady, such a man is all the world. Why, well, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower, in fact, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris's face, and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him make yourself no less. No, no, le oh, no less. My thumb was crossed. <laughs> Nay, bigger. Women grow by men. Speak for, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to start? We do. It's, it's, it's good. First of all. <laughs> Lady Capulet starts out this whole thing about introducing the idea of marriage to Juliet by saying, I was younger than you when I had you. And how old is Juliet? Like 14. Well, 14. And so how old is Lady Capulet right 28 now? 28 or le yes. less than. Yes. Oh, if she's, she might be exaggerating. Maybe. But first of all, let's, t let's like back in time when Lord Capulet said that, yeah, women have babies as young, but sometimes they're marred by that and remember juliet has no brothers and sisters that's the only child so maybe it kind of was a bad thing that happened that lady capulet couldn't have babies anymore and lady capulet doesn't seem to be that into being a mom anyway and you know she's just uncomfortably introducing the idea of her daughter needing to like a guy because they want him to marry her mm. so it, it starts out as her saying, you know, um, you should think about it because I was married at your age 
had a baby at your age and Paris is looking at you as a possibility and that's supposed to be good. And the nurse is all into it. She's like, he's, he's hot. So he's <laughs> yeah. And a wax, like a mm, statue, mm, mm, like a Ooh. statue. They should make a statue out of yeah. him. So the nurse thinks it's great for a different reason. Lady Cappy, yeah. it's all about his social class. My dear is amazing. And the nurse is all like, and he's everything hot. else. Around. So, <laughs> The best of both words, worlds, Julia should be excited about this. And, and they think so too. Um, and so Lady Capulet builds like a beautiful poem out of it, makes Paris into this book that all you have to do is open it and read the lines to see what else is there because the outside, the cover is so beautiful. And if you have him, then <laughs> you make yourself even more. And because... I don't know. She's just thinking that you mm -hmm. become richer and your social class is better by having this particular husband. And uh, then the nurse ends up saying, no less. Right. You, women grow by men. And she's talking about grow by men. Like, Preggers. You get pregnant. Because the nurse really only thinks about like the more physical parts of relationships. Well, I had a man I loved. Oh, she had a great yeah. husband yeah. and she loved it, her husband. Her husband was great with kids too. It was really sad about Susan and sad about her husband, but she loves Julia. Julia's like the daughter mm -hmm. she didn't get to raise. Mm -hmm. And she's really excited about her finding a love of her life and having girl babies. Yeah. And, and Mrs. Capulet just wants her to be rich. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris's love? I uh, look to like, if looking, liking, move, but no more deep will I indart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. That's not a clear uh, yes. Madam, the guests are come. Supper served up. You called, my, la my young lady asked for. Um, the nurse is cursed in the pantry and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. We follow thee, exit servant. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girls, seek happy nights to happy days. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So the servant interrupts, says, everything's crazy. You have to get to the party. Let's go. And, and you know, Lady Cap is like, okay, you can do this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the nurse is like, woohoo. So oh, the county baby. stays. The county are you county. talking about like county. Lewis County or no. Thurston County? No, county is kind of long for count. It is. Yeah. He's a count. That's his, his, uh, his uh, station. Uh, the same as an earl, lower than a duke, higher than a baron. Uh, he, he's, got, he's got social class, Count yeah. Paris. And so when she says the county stays, the county is waiting. The count is waiting. Count Paris is waiting for you right now. He's downstairs. He wants to see you. Mm -hmm. You can do this, right? Go yeah, get it. They're get ready. Done. They're ready for her to make a match here. And yeah. but Juliet's her that line is really she's, interesting. She's like, oh, oh look to yes. like if looking like liking move. Right. But no more deep will I dart my eye. That's she's it. Like, I'm not gonna look too deeply into this like, unless I'll, you make me. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. I, I'll, I'll see him. She said, I don't even <laughs> I've never thought about marriage before. I'm damn 14. Uh, gross? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Accurate. She's being pushed from two sides now. Uh, one who wants her to fall in love and have babies and have a great life, and one who wants her to hook up Make with something of herself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's kind of tough. I mean, what are you going to do? So, um, lots of cool words in this one, I thought. Yeah. What do you have? Um, I had up here, uh, well, several. Okay. So, um, we did that, did that, we did that. What about um, this line? Uh, she says, shake, quoth the yeah. dove house. Twas no need, I trow. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a lot in there. Okay, yeah. first of all, the shaking is from the earthquake that's mentioned a couple oh. lines earlier. So there was an earthquake on that day. That's why she remembers it. She's telling a very disconnected story. She's like, oh, oh, I know how old she is. Remember the earthquake when you were out of town? Okay, so there was an earthquake. And shake means, okay, the dove house. The dove house is like a chicken coop for doves mm -hmm. is a tall like tower where the doves live and um so the dove house went shaking and she was sitting near it 
when it happened. And so, quoth the Dove House, quoth normally means said, like said right? Yeah, like but the, the Dove House started shaking. It went like this. this. Yeah. The, the Dove House is all shake, shake, shake. And I'm all like, I'm out of here. That's what the nurse is saying. You didn't have to tell me to okay. move. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I was out. <laughs> and then what is this? I trow. I, I promise. I say. I, Isn't I, that also yeah. um, like by my trove? Yes. I trow give my word. Truth. I give you my word. I got out of there. Thank you. Do you have any two female? You bet I did. No. Sorry, I have that a was couple. Trout. You bet. You bet I did. I bet. I got out of there. Because I had another uh, good one. I can't. Top of the next page in that first. The uh, Holy Dam or Holodam? Holodam. Yeah, what is that? Is that Holy oh, Mother? Holy okay. Mother. Yeah. Mary. So yes. basically swearing by um, the Mother Mary, which is very common. It's like saying Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yes, very much. And. Yeah. They did that. They they swore by God's toes, right. God's wounds, which came zoons. out zoons, zoons and then zoons, and ah. zowie and zoinks. That's true. Yeah, that all came from God's, God's oinks. wounds. God's oinks, zoinks, <sighs> yeah, zoinks, <laughs> zoinkies, which is Scooby Doo for God's wounds. It's a true late. story. Um, and that, that, that's I think those are mostly the yeah, words that, that I saw. Much. Um, there there were you know some other ones yeah. that I'm sure they'll yeah. find. Okay. And the lady Capulet, um, she was just like, hey, her role in this whole thing was Juliet. Have, have you thought about marriage? No. Yeah, Get you know, to I think, thinking. I, I think what happened just before this scene yeah. is Lord Capulet went to Lady Capulet and said, hey, <laughs> when I was talking to the prince, yeah. his cousin Paris yeah. told me he's looking for someone to marry yeah. and he thinks Juliet. Be, and she's like, Oh, oh, okay. All right, I'm on it. I'm on it. She says. Social class. Mm -hmm. And by the way, maybe if we marry Paris into the family, then we have one up. Uh huh. And then we're more in the prince's pocket yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So they already between the two of them, they're like, we got to get Juliet on this. Yeah. Right. True that. And uh, nobody told them. The nurse was surprised. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that guy. Right. That's right. A good one. Yeah. But and the nurse also like in uh, as far as the character notes like. She we she clearly is like a mom to Juliet, more of a mother. Yeah, right. She spends a lot of time on the nurse in this scene. A lot of time telling us about her backstory. A lot of time yeah. telling us her the deepness of because I mean we've met Benvolio how many times already, and we know nothing. We don't know of his, his his life, life yeah. at all. We don't. Does he we have know a he's a friend to Romeo as he well has a cousin, a dog. dog. We don't yeah, know. We anything. don't know. We have Did nothing. Did he have a? He's uh, not a husband that he, passed away. He he just helps the story. He really he is just really a carrier. Her. But the nurse is important because knowing who raised Juliet and what their background was and their, their value system is important. Because does Juliet go downstairs in this party, meet Paris and go, oh yeah, I want to be rich. And just they get married and live happily ever I'm after. i do this. <laughs> it would then be called Paris, Paris and Juliet. And Juliet. And it's it is not like, called that. It's called Romeo and Juliet. Because it's not Paris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why does she turn down Paris, who's lovely? Yeah, by all accounts. He's a man of wax. He is a gross. So Juliet in this, she doesn't get much, it doesn't have a line load in this scene, really. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like a very quick introduction. She gets hers later. To show maybe the dichotomy, the yes. back, back and yes. forth between the mother and if the mother. If I were directing it, I totally would be doing that. Like, I would have, oof, like, oof, the, oof, the oof. lady would be You, Julia, be stuck in the middle between yes. the nurse and the mom. Yes, yes. And so Lady Cappy would be very stiff and formal, and the nurse would be all over the place, and goofy and laughing and having fun. Right. Where Lady Cappy would be not And amused. you could watch not Julia amused. react in different ways. Uh -huh. to Because she'd be like, prim and proper <laughs> to her nurse and be like oh dang i'm not being prim and proper yeah. so she would be torn there's the two sides of julia the yeah. one who tries to be like like she's supposed to be like her mom and then the one who was raised to be a uh, happier funnier yeah. kind of uh life lover joyful existence so. agreed because the nurse is kind of fun agreed yeah. well i think that was a i like that scene a lot yeah for it's expository lot. expository information mm -hmm. yes yeah, so, and characterization for juliet which is very important we did get i mean ben Bolio helps with the characterization of of uh, romeo, romeo. Mm -hmm. and that he builds him up as this like um like morose which is a word for like sad um he's a sad boy who's always in love and needs to be told he needs to look at other girls and you know, there's a, i mean there's a, a fairly typical um best friend boy relationship 
between those two. Yeah, I think that's yeah. true. Huh? Romeo's kind of a normal but sad guy right now. All right, mm -hmm. now we get to one uh, in your reader's diary. It's titled Mercutio's Speech, and it is scene four. It takes place on a street. So who, how are we casting this? So I have not yet been Romeo. Do you want to be Romeo? Um, do you want to do Benvolio or do you want to do Mercutio? Who, would you like to be Mercutio and read the big one? I love Mercutio. Okay, be that and I will okay. just be, okay. and then I'm Benvolio. And you're Benvolio. Okay, great. That's sort okay. of, okay, let me mark just a couple here so I don't get lost. All right, so a little preview on this, and this is our pre-talk. Um, one of the traditions back in the old days, Shakespeare's time and before, I guess, but definitely in Shakespeare's time, is that uh, masking was done during the holidays. Even later it was. It was done like um, like about 100 years ago or just a little bit before that. Uh, that's how Halloween actually ended up being a thing. It used to be on Thanksgiving even. People would put masks and, and costumes on and they'd go from house to house and get treats given to them because a lot of the holidays in Europe at least Western Europe, England, Ireland, um, people would get dressed up and go to other people's houses in disguise and get something, like join into a feast or uh, get treats handed to them or whatever. And um, for whatever reason, this is a great kind of fun thing to do. So in Italy, according to the script anyway, uh, the idea is that young men who wanted to go um, partying around town would get dressed up, put on masks, and kind of crash every party. And they'd be welcome to do that. Because, well, it kind of added some spice and fun to your, your party. If uh, these young dudes show up and you don't know who it is, it's a little mysterious, and they come in and they dance with the girls and, 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 and talk to people, and people have to guess who's who and all that. So it was fun. It was a fun kind of thing to do. It's like uh, it's just party crashing, but it's allowed and maybe even a, encouraged in a certain age group. And uh, festivals, it would be a big deal too. So these guys, because they're party crashers and they don't want to be recognized, hey, they're going to wear masks. So these guys are out on the street on their way to the party and they've got masks that they're either wearing or getting ready to put on. And that's kind of our plot element that moves it from one place to another. It has to happen for them to go into this situation where the two people can meet. How else are Romeo and Juliet going to meet? And this is important. This is super important. Romeo can go a lot of places. And if he puts a mask on, he can basically go anywhere, even into his enemy's home. Juliet can go nowhere. She really can't. Anywhere she goes, she has to go with an escort. And they're all going to know where she goes. Where does she go to get away from the public eye or from her parents or her family? If there's an answer to that question, be thinking about that because that's really key to this. Romeo has the freedom to move around, sometimes in disguise. Juliet doesn't have that kind of freedom. It just it didn't happen back then. Girls didn't have that. All right, lame. I have a quick, quick, because you were talking about like holidays and things like that. Mm -hmm. So earlier in the scene where they they find out about the party, mm -hmm. they talk about the ancient feast. So is that referring to a particular holiday at that time? It could be, but I don't know. It doesn't um, really something say. Something in mid July. Ancient mm -hmm. feast means probably like it was. A, it's a because uh, like, Montague says that. Yeah, yeah I think Capulet it's probably that. like a like uh, an like an annual a saint's feast, even if it's thing. just like a party that he throws mm -hmm. every year that's not connected to him. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds about right. Interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, Mercutio's speech. Okay. Are you okay. Enter Romeo Mercutio Benvolio with five or six maskers. That's the other guys in their group. Torchbearers and others. What it's show? nighttime. Oh, sorry, it's nighttime. What? Shall this speech be spoke for our excuse, or shall we on without apology? The date is out for, of such prol prolixity, but let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light, with his light feathers, and so bound I cannot 
bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I see. So wait, wait, wait. Let's take a moment to talk about puns again. I, I warned you, Shakespeare's time, they were so punny. And that was really entertaining to them. So we're back on that now. He talks about um, the soles of his feet and having a soul of lead. He can't dance because he's not light footed because of his heaviness and his soul. And then he also talks about um, how he can't uh, borrow Cupid's wings to, to soar above a common bound. He can't like fly with his love because he is sore. As in pain. Because he got hit by Cupid's arrow, which Cupid comes up all the time. And he, uh, he can't, he's, he's sinking under love's burden. And then Mercutio continues on in that kind of pun fest. Pun fest. I'm going, are you? I love, I love puns. Okay. <laughs> And to sink in it, should you burden love, to great oppression for a tender thing? Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like a thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick for, the, for pricking, and you beat love down. Give me a case to put my visage in. A visor for a visor. Oh, this is so cool. Is a clue. So first of all, it's just from uh, Romeo being I can't, I can't dance. I'm sad. And Mercutio saying, "Just get over it. Yeah. Come on, let's go. So just go. You have to have fun." And then he says, "I need a mask for my mask." And he's talking about his real face, he's saying, "This is a mask. Give me this mask to put on my mask." He is such a complex character, Mercutio. Mm -hmm. He's really cool. Yeah. Listen to the things he says. I do not believe, this is my opinion, that he is a happy soul. Oh, gosh. No, think about he it. If you were saying that about yourself, magic. it's like, um, okay, my face is a mask. Just and get over it. And he's <laughs> acting like he's happy. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, I'm just going to put a mask on my mask. Yeah. No, that's not that's good, right? It is so he's, interesting. He's, he's different. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Wait, it's me, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. Come, not, oh, and by the way, Benvolio just wants this to get happen, you know, to happen and get over. He's like, this at idea. the beginning, like <laughs> Romeo's like, what are we gonna say? How are we gonna get in there? <laughs> we'll speak. We're gonna have a speech. What are we gonna do? And he's like, no, no, we're not gonna go. They used to actually do that. Like, these maskers used to come in. That maybe they do a skit, they do a song, they do something like to entertain the crowd when they get there. And so that's what Romeo's saying. He's like, we're gonna have to do something like that. I don't want to do that. I don't and and Beverly was like, no, there's no need for that. That's old fashioned. We don't need to do that. We're just going to go in and measure them a measure, which is kind of a play on words as well. We're going to go in there for a measure of music, just a short time, maybe dance a little, take a look at the girls and we're out. Exactly. Just like we're going in and out. That's it. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And so now they're out on the street having their pen battle. And Ben was like, come, knock and enter. And no sooner in, but every man be taken to his legs. Let's just go dance. Yeah. That's it. How hard is that? A torch for me. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Tut. We'll draw thee from the mire of this reverence, love, wherein thou seekest up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight home. Nay, okay. that's stick us so. Okay, wait a minute. So he's, like, Romeo's saying, I'll be a candle holder. Literally, there'd be people just holding the light. They're just saying, I'm just gonna hold the torch. I'll watch you guys dance. Somebody's got to hold the light. He's so funny. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and, and, and then Mercutio's like, no, we're going to drag you out by the ears. Horses used to get stuck in the mud a lot. And they're actually, the longer bit of the speech, mm. this one's been cut. And yeah. it talks about like a kind of a story about a horse that gets stuck in the mud. It doesn't tell you the whole story and nobody knows the whole story, which is why it's been cut from this particular version. Um, Cause it doesn't make a ton of sense by itself. But um the streets in crowded towns would become just kind of mud. As a matter of fact, so muddy that carts didn't even have wheels. They were sleds that would be pulled by very, very strong animals that could pull them through the mud. Poop and mud. Yeah, poop it, poopy mud. And uh, so the idea of being pulled out of the mud that you're stuck in, you're stuck in that stinky mud. Mm -hmm. We're going to pull you out of there Gross. so that you can, you know, go forward right. in your life. Okay. And you said, nay, that's not so already, Romeo? Hmm? 
You already said that last mm -hmm. one? Yeah. She's on the next okay. page. Great. I mean, sir, in delay, we waste our lights in vain, like lamps by day. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? <laughs> that dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Okay, this is a fun exchange, isn't it? It's cute. First of all, Romeo is in a bad mood, and it turns out that here's the reason why. He doesn't think they should go, because it seems like a bad idea, because he had a dream. He had a dream, and it told him, basically, you shouldn't do this. It's a bad idea. You might... I don't know, die. <laughs> so he, yeah. he has a bad dream and he doesn't want to go. And uh, when he says that he had a dream, Mercutio is like, yeah, I did too, whatever. He's like, well, what was yours about? And Mercutio is like, the dreamers often lie. Because that's, okay. And you're going to get more of, of his ideas about dreams. But in Mercutio, that's the basic thing that he believes is that dreams aren't real. And then Romeo's like, huh, making a funny pun of that. They lie in bed while they dream things true. Get it? Get it. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So then Mercutio good. goes off and he tells him about it. <clears throat> this is serious. Yeah. And I know you're probably looking at the page going, holy crumb, I'm glad I'm not reading this out I'll loud. I'll interrupt it a couple times. Oh, great. It's fun. Okay. okay. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies, atoms, yes, atomies, um, athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes, made of long spider's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, the traces of the smallest spider's web, the collars of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner, a small gray-coated gnat, not so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub, time out of mind the fairy's coachmakers. And in this state, yeah, hang on. Yeah, it's a good. That's a good spot. This first part <clears throat> is just describing her, and it's a lovely fairy tale of sorts, right? It She's is like a cool. little fairy. She's literally a fairy. And so describes fairy. all of like yeah. her accoutrement. Yeah, she yeah. has a carriage or coach of sort pulled by little atomies, and the atomy is just something so small you can barely see it, and um, which is where the word atom comes mm. from. Um, precedes atoms weren't a thing. Atomy. Well, I guess Adam's were, but that's what they were. Um, so, <laughs> they weren't talked about. Yeah. So it, it's kind of almost like a Cinderella moment, you know, where she's got like these little, mm. little things pulling her carriage. Totally. And, uh, and her job is to take dreams. And so she's this little character that, um, Queen Mab. Yeah. And, and there's, there's some mythology to Mab. It's an Irish fairy mm -hmm. queen, but this isn't, th this is Mercutio's uh, um, imaginative uh, spin on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so he's weaving this tale for everybody, um, telling, doing some storytelling to everybody in the street right now. And it starts out just like description. And now he's going to tell you what she does. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Or courtiers' knees that dream on curtsies straight, or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees, or ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream, which oft the angry Mab with blisters plagues because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose and then dreams, uh, dreams he of smelling out a suit. And sometime comes she with a tithe pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep, then dreams he of another benefice. Sometime he she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's get to the soldier thing in a minute. So the, yeah. the ones oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. previous to the soldier part are all just like, different types of people and the kinds of dreams they might have that Mab could bring. Right. Okay. So like if you're a lawyer, you dream about money. 
um, if you're a, a, somebody who's in love, you dream about kisses. And right, right, right. Um, the tithe pig's tale, that one's a little tough. Um, in the time of Shakespeare, a lot of clergymen were under criticism for being in it for the money. Yeah. So that means that people that work for the church often were like, the, people are suspicious about them right. taking their money. And tithes are things that you give to the church. You give money to the church. If you don't have money, you can give livestock. So a, mm -hmm. a pig could literally be your tithe. There you go. And so talking about um, a church right. leader, um, dreaming about getting in another more oh, somebody else to give them money. Yeah. 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 So basically about greediness. A lot of that is about being greedy and dreaming about right. the things that you want to get. Um, and then he, uh, he switches gears. He goes from, no. so he's like, describe that. That's pretty what people do. It's kind of, um, it, it's, it's more like critical. Mm -hmm. He becomes really cynical. Like people dream about stuff that they want because they're greedy and gross. Yeah. And then he gets to this part and this feels more personal. Agreed. Yeah. So go ahead and read the part about the soldiers. Sometime she driveth o'er a soldier's neck and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of healths five fathom deep. And then anon drums in his ear at which he starts and wakes and being thus frighted swears a prayer or two and sleeps again this yeah. is that very mab that plats the because yeah. that, that was the book ending of it like he doesn't just say soldiers dream this yeah he says they dream these bad things and then they wake up and then they say prayer and then they go back to sleep. go back to sleep that's i personal it like, feels like he's got a little yeah. honestly ptsd yeah, and like we learn thought. more about Mercutio later, and and the yeah. the name Mercutio is related to things like Mercury, Mercurial, and it's like quick acting. And Mercury, by the way, is the element that's in a, a old school thermometer, and the reason that it works there is because it will um, change its size and shape very quickly based on its temperature, which is why it works so nicely in a thermometer. And um, so Mercury was named after the god of the was the messenger of the gods because of his great speed. Okay. And so something that is mercurial quickly changes and moves. Okay. Um, and Mercutio, even in this speech shows us that he goes from being a creative storyteller to a cynical like commentator on the world being meh, not so great sometimes, people not being so great sometimes too. Dang, Oosh. nightmares yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. A PTSD kind of a veteran coming back from war, having lots of bad feelings about things, and then it turns even more ugly. Yeah. yeah. So, Whew, this, I'm sorry, yeah, this is that very mad that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs, which once untangled, much misfortune bodes. This is the hag, when maids lie on their backs, that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Peace, peace, Mercutio. Yeah. Peace. So this last piece actually gets pretty ugly at the end, and it's like pretty, I would almost say it, rapey at the end graphic and and so we're not going to talk about that and what it means in, in general but it, it's nightmarish let's just say it's nightmarish and yeah. and also it kind of goes back a little bit to the the fable type thing about the plates the manes of horses that's mm -hmm. actually a thing uh they used to think that the reason that horses would get the little uh, whippy braided knots in their hair um, was because, because the fairies came into right. that. So like fairies would come and do like mischievous acts. The fairies to really wives. like our horses' manes. They do. So if you've got horses, they you could make a fairy. Sense. It's a fairy thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but then it jumps right back into kind of gross, terrible nightmares, and and finally he gets he breaks off, or Romeo jumps in and says, "Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa easy, you're, buddy. You're you're not even making sense right now." Okay, let's finish. I thought I was bringing the mood down. Yeah, right? Seriously. True. I talk of dreams. Wait, thou talks to nothing. Oh, I thought you said I that. I apologize. That oh, okay. okay. So thou. It's say totally it. fine. It does, it's not. Thou talks of nothing. Got it. Okay. True. I talk of dreams. 
which are the children children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air and more inconstant than the wind, who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and, being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his face to the dew-dropping south. Yeah, so he basically says, yeah, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about anything. Dreams are stupid. They're nothingness. They're like mm-hmm. the wind. And they go this way and they go that way. That's right. Mean. That's right. Yeah. So double, double down. Because if, if dreams are real, that means my dreams are real. Zoinks. Yeah, so right? Dreams can't not be. Dreams can't be real. They're because not real. Mercutio's dreams are terrible. And if you put any weight on the dreams that you have, then Mercutio should be very upset and very sad, very bothered Indeed. by what's mm-hmm. going on. So he says dreams aren't real. So drop it, Romeo. Right. Drop it like it's hot. And so then Benvolio says, because they seem to be forgetting, (laughs) this wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date. With this night's revels and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast, by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course, direct my sail, oh, lusty gentleman. On, lusty gentleman. Oh, Sorry oh. To correct you. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. On. No. no. On. on. No, on. Like, go forward. And then Benvolio says, strike drop. And they're out. Okay, but this and- I- Go back to this line. Romeo's line, this is talk about foreshadowing or eyeshadowing or whatever you want to do here. Okay. This one, he's saying, Buy some vials. I think I'm, something's going to happen tonight and I might die. Oh, yeah. well. And, and in the words of the great Carrie Underwood. Jesus, take the wheel. He says, he that hath the steerage of my course. Oh my God. Direct myself. P.S. Did you notice that I just got that? Like I guessed the only Carrie Underwood song and it was relevant. Did I know? Yes. So I that's exactly Jesus. what Romeo was saying. He's like, it's really dang. Sad. If I go, I might die. Oh well. Tell me what to do, God. I, you got it. This it's in your hands now. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. And even though he had premonitions, which are like seeing ahead that bad things mm-hmm. might happen, he's like, oh well, fate's fate. And people in Shakespeare's time actually kind of believe that. Like, you're fated. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And so he's like, well, something bad's going to happen. So it is interesting because you can see that, but he, that half the steerage of my course, he is capitalized, which Mm -hmm. is so common when you're speaking of um, the Christian God or Mm -hmm. or Mm Judeo-Christian or even Muslim. He. Yeah, right. He that hath the steerage of my course. Who else would that be? Like the captain from Gilligan's Island. Oh, I'd let him steer my course. Wait, he's in charge. Sorry, that sounded awful. <laughs> <laughs> that was not. Yes, no. Okay. Okay. So great. There are so some words in here that I. Um, mm, yes, there's a lot. Yes. Okay. So, what do you have? Um, let's go kind of back to the beginning. Um, prolixity. Let's I go to where. Let's, let's go to where be... diary. Yeah, prolixity. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. So we're. I've got yeah, my that's diary. Fashionness for such old fashionedness. Prolixity. So I'm trying yeah. to think of some other word that is etymologically. You're not going to connect it in time. Not so, okay, it's not going to work. So that's just that when we just have to. That know. one's actually out of prolixity itself. It's old fashioned. It, it's so old fashioned. Yeah, it's prolixed itself. Like, I don't think you should say that. You don't. No. Um, right. Bound a. Wait, so I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. I can't leap higher than, I can't leap, like dance leap, yes. bounding a pitch, a high height. So it's literally talking about sort height. of like, so the sound of woe is a low pitch and I can't even leap over that I low, can't even, that low thing. I can't. Oh, that's clever. I can't rise above it. Shakespeare is very clever sometimes. Sort of. I mean, I honestly, I, I feel like, speaking of prolixity, that <laughs> the, We're never gonna the happen abundance again. of punny talk uh weighs it down a little for a modern reader i do i mean no offense Mm. to shakespeare but i think that modern readers are like yeah we got it huh Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) i mean i love it but i'm a fan i'm just like oh that was good 
it, sounds good. And then sometimes they're buried in this beautiful language, but that's sometimes true. the more obvious these ones long are exchanges waiting. and often Mercutio is part of them. That's true. Where they're just like, pun, 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 that's pun, true. pun, 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 aren't we funny? And I'm like, yeah, guys, whatever. Yes. Hey, Fiona, what did you have over there? So you had some underlying. Oh, what's an alderman? It's a guy that is an elder. It's an elder in the church. Okay. I also have oh, I that. Um, ambuscados. Ambushes. Ooh, of course nice. it is. Is it actually yes. the Spanish way to say ambush? Do we know? Probably. Ambuscado? I'm going to say yes. Which may not Correct be true. Corrector in class well, when you see her next. You could look it up. It may not be true. I Ambuscado? often just say things. Ambush. Ambuscado. Ambuscado. It's like a mantiaga. What is health five fathom doing? It's not. Ooh, uh, is that bodies? Fathom, health five fathoms. You know, I don't so know that, about... that's actually, I don't really know the health part of it, but five fathoms, I, I always thought it was like um, sailors lost at sea, mm. but I, but that's, that's a good look up. So let me look that up, look that up. Uh, I definitely feel like it's bodies, deaths. Look that up and then go right? on Yeah, right? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Look it up and tell her, and she'll tell me, Maybe and then I'll forward like it to math, Fiona. Right? Mass grade. If we all just email Fiona. Or something? email Fiona. Maybe. Um, also, Fathoms are definitely a, a, a water um, measurement, but right. not. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, a quick question also mm -hmm. about um, maybe you should expray, explain. So, because their breath was or with sweet meats, tainted are. Okay. Sweet meats so, weren't meat, just so that we know that. Sweet meats are like um, nuts. minced up, uh, nuts and things like dates and like dried fruits and things like that that, that, that were often like mm, candy eating. Right. So, we would even say something like the meat of an apple is you know sweet meat but right. anyway it was just meat. like snacks sticky sweet snacks probably right and uh you know there were all kinds of reasons that when women were told they got cold sores yeah. and things like that because they didn't understand viruses and such but um yeah and that they would blame it on faults that you might have um, like eating too many sweets eating too many sweets yeah yeah so yeah don't do that don't eat too many sweet meats that is interesting because it does say so, uh, which oft the angry Mab with blisters, plagues, mm -hmm. and that is like giving them mouth yeah. sores, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. they dream of kisses. Yeah, and so, and, and so that's just another thing that was blamed on squirrels. fairies. If you got like an uh, like a sore on your mouth and you didn't like- You just pleased somebody. From, oh my gosh, the fairies got me in the night. <sighs> Fairy bite. Nasty little fairies. Fairies are gross. You shouldn't eat sweet meats. Mm. Yeah, that's don't eat sweet meats. meats. Okay, so yeah, I feel, oh, and then that, the plot of that one was essentially- uh, you know they're on the way like let's let's go mm -hmm. and it starts with romeo just being like yeah. uh, i'm kind of feeling heavy about this yeah, i'm not gonna dance should we go i don't want to go i'm not gonna dance i had a bad dream go, but we shouldn't do it yeah. okay i'll go but i'm probably gonna die but oh well that's the whole that's, that's the scene that's romeo that's the scene. and mercutio was like come on let's cheer you up i'm actually complicated um i'm gonna tell a story to cheer you up and then i'm actually gonna make myself upset in the middle of it and then you're gonna tell me to stop and i'm gonna be like yeah fine let's do this and that's really that's the sure. whole thing and then it of course is book ended with i think i'm gonna die mm -hmm. and and and, and ben Bolle was saying we're gonna be late guys food food's done we got we mm -hmm. let's go i just wanted to dance this was supposed to be, supposed to be fun. a good time mm -hmm. yeah basically just a night out for the guys Okay. Okay. Um, so now this these are servants, now. Antony, servant, this is, and then pop yeah. Yeah. So this how do we, be a little tricky. Why don't, uh, like, uh, how about Rebecca, you read all the servants. I'm going to be all the servants. Oh, uh, I'll be Capulet. Fiona, you'll have to be second Capulet initially. Oh, second Capulet? What's yeah. Second ca oh, second Capulet. Yeah. Can you do all those? Can you have a conversation with yourself, Rebecca? That'll be fine. Is oh, Antony it's going to happen. Servants? Antony and Hot Pan mm -hmm. and first. And oh, they are. Servant. Oh, yes. So those are all you. So then, Rebecca, then you'll end up being Romeo. If I'm Capulet, I'll, I'll stay Capulet. Tibalt? Then you'll be Tybalt. But I have a servant thing right there. Oh, I'll, I'll be the servant then. Okay, too. so then I will take this. So I'm going to put oh, next to Wait, but you're Romeo. No, no, no. The servant oh, is right after. Tybalt. I can be servant. Yeah, you can be servant, servant, and then you come back as Tybalt. I can be that one I'm servant. I'm Tybalt. No, you are Romeo. Okay, I'm, I'm Tybalt. Romeo. I'm okay. Tybalt. She's Tybalt. I'm still Capulet. Okay. Then we've got a Juliet that's got to be me, and then you'll be the nurse, Fiona. I'll be the nurse. Uh, who's and you'll also be Benvolio. You're Juliet? I'll be Juliet. We're going we're gonna to speak lovingly to each other. And then Wait, and who's Benvolio. Capulet? I'm so sorry. That's Fiona? 
just no. me. I'm I'm Capulet and Juliet. You're all the servants and Romeo and Fiona. Except for the else. one servant, because I'm except the that one, one servant. The one servant. So, but I'm Tybalt, Nurse, and Benvolio. Okay, so let me make sure. Yes, and I'm Romeo. 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 Not Romeo. This is so much easier when there's more people. There. Yeah. Where are you guys? Why don't you just? <sighs> I know. Social distancing. We could have shouted yes. in a field. Yes. To one another. Okay, you guys. This is this is like mm -hmm. a big deal. This so is a big deal. This one. It, this is where it becomes Romeo and Juliet because they haven't been in a scene together, That's and right. this is the one because this is the party at Capulet's house. And remember, Capulet's house is where Juliet lives, and Capulet's house is where Romeo is going. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, servants. All right, here we go. I'm all of them. <laughs> okay, I'm again. This is gonna be fun. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> this scene is just to mask the scene change. That's right. So they're it moving has, things around. They gotta bring out like worthless tables. I mean, they give you a little social background, a little historical background here, but yeah. it really is just so that the people who just were on stage as the maskers. Change. Can, well, they don't even have to change. They just have to go and re-enter so that we know they came to some place else. Because remember, that's true. Shakespeare stage didn't change. They didn't have a lot of like scenery or things like Indeed. that. It was just a blank slate for the most part. And so the people that were in the street had to leave so that the servants could make it look like a party was going on. And they made it look like a party was going on by looking like they were taking everything out. Like all, they'd just be taking trays of fake food. And, yeah and benches and stuff across the stage to look like they're clearing things out so right yeah so this little interchange between the servants isn't terribly important for plot it's about setting the scene all right here we go all right where's pot pan that he helps not to take away he shift a trencher he scrape a trencher when good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands and they unwashed too is a foul thing. Away with the joint stools. Remove the court cupboard. Look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pain. And as thou lovest me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell, Antony and Potpan. Hi, boy, ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for in the great chamber. Uh, we cannot be here and there too. Cheerily, boys, be brisk a while, and the longer liver take all. So that was just an exchange between the longer the liver. <laughs> yeah, that's funny because okay. So they were <laughs> getting all the stuff cleared yeah. and making a hall for the, the the dance by clearing out the things. And uh, meanwhile, the main servant is telling people also to uh, save some of the food mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because the servants are having their after party party. Um, so wherever the ser servants congregate, um, that, that's where the food will be that's the leftovers. They, um, the trenchers actually were actually bread that was placed on a platter and then the food was on the bread. And then the um, noble folks didn't eat the bread. They just let the juices and stuff soak into it. And um, then that bread mm. would end up being a really tasty treat for the servants later. Uh, so uh, also he talks about like, save me some marshpane, marzipan, which is kind mm -hmm. of an almond cookie doughish kind of stuff that they could sculpt into cool centerpieces and stuff. And um, so he wants some of that for later. And he also wants the porter, the guy that manages the door at the, at the big noble house, to um, open up the let door and let some girls in because there's going to be a party with all the extra food Service. and stuff. And he wants the other servants to hurry up. Come on, guys. Let's do it. Get this. her done. Get her done. All right. And then Capulet is there at the door reading everybody. Welcome, gentlemen. Ladies that have their toes unplugged with corns will have a bout with you. Aha, my mistresses, which of you will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she, I'll swear, hath corns. Am I come near you now? Okay, so he's just like trying to trick the girls into dancing. He's like, come on girls, you need to dance. I'll tell them that you have yucky old feet with corns on them if you don't dance, mm -hmm. right? Is that why you're still standing there? Get over there and dance. He's kind of creeping okay, me out a little. Creepy. Welcome, gentlemen. Now, he's just seen the people coming in with the mask, so he's just seen Romeo yeah, et al. Yeah, the Montagues and stuff. Oh, by the way, Mercutio's not a Montague. 
Mm. Did we make that clear? No, we did not no, make that no, clear. We haven't found that out either. <clears throat> well, he was on the guest mentioned. list. He was on the guest list. He was, but doesn't yeah, so he's, he's Mercutio related. is neither a Montague nor a Capulet. He is Romeo's friend, so he has allies that are Montagues, but he's actually related to, who do you think? Um, I'm going to guess with the nurse. No. I'm going to, no, she's not a is, noble person. Is, is he related to Juliet? No. Prince. Yes. That's right. He's okay. related to right. Prince, and that means also Paris. probably That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so, you know, so anyway. That's right. I love when I forget things and I get so to remember. They're all wearing again. masks, so nobody recognizes them. But, Indeed. But Capulet sees them and he says, Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and can tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, mm -hmm. such as would please. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. <sighs> so he's like, I used to do that. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall, give room. And foot it, girls. And the music plays and they dance. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up. And quench the fire, the room has grown too hot. So in these big halls, um, they would have the, the tables and chairs out when it was time to eat. And then they would move all the furniture to the side and turn the tables up. So they'd have a dance hall now. And quench the fire so that it wasn't so hot in there. It's Summer. Like July. Why yeah. do they have a fire? And so now that it's time to have a, a dance. Just clearing it out and telling the girls to get out there. Mm -hmm. Ah, Sarah, this unlooked for sport comes well. Nay, sit, nay, sit, good cousin Capulet. For you and I are past our dancing days. How long is now since last yourself and I were in a mask? Fire lady, 30 years. What, man? No, tis not so much. Tis not so much. Tis since the uh, nuptial of Lucentio come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, and then we masked. Tis more, tis more, his son is elder, sir, his son is thirty. Will you tell me that? His son was but a ward two years ago. <laughs> okay, let's, let's think about that. Remember how old is Lady Capulet? Twenty, late twenties probably. Yes, because she's yeah. about twice the age of Julia right, right. now. Lord Capulet hasn't done the masking thing for 30, 25, 30 years. 30 years. Yes. Yeah. 30 years. So he would have been 45-ish now, yeah. right? At the minimum. Oh, gosh. Way, probably more. If the last time that he did this partying thing, he was probably in his early 20s. Oh. Maybe. Yeah. He so could have been in his like late 50. 50s. So we're looking at like late 20s yeah. and late 40s at yeah, the very it is, least. It is super likely that Lady Capulet then is maybe wife number two. Mm. Female mortality at the time was incredibly high. Women died at young ages, usually in child something birth. related to childbirth. Yeah. And um, so he might have lost wife number one, went on to wife number two, ended up only with one girl, child, which for him would be a bit of a failure. There's nobody to take his um, place yeah. in his Carry family. On the name. So whoever he chooses to be his son-in-law. Is his heir then, right? Because it's all man, yeah. man to man to man. He talks about in that one scene with Paris about how she's a hopeful lady of his earth, meaning that all of his belongings that he owns, his earth, his stuff. Uh, goes with her. Goes with her and to whoever she goes to. So this is a, actually really important. Indeed. Yeah. So it's important to know how old he is because of his attitudes. Yes. Yeah. That's a really good point. All right, Romeo. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Sorry. Um, so to a serving man. Um, what lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. No, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in Ethiopia's ear. Or, is that right? An Ethiop's ear. Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady or her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? Forswear at sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. We gotta talk about Romeo here. Um, I thought he was in love with Rosalind. He was like, I thought she was like beautiful. Ago. And there was like nothing. He walked into this party, away. like, where's Rosalind? I'm so in love with her. <gasps> and then yeah, instead, he's like, who's that? 
I'd forgotten. How do you even know her name? (laughs) And she is so much more beautiful. Like, Bimboli was so right. (laughs) Bimboli knew Romeo like that. He knew him. He did. He was like, Mm -hmm. I'll just show him another pretty girl and he'll be fine. (laughs) And it worked. Except, this one, we all know who it is, right? Is it the nurse? Yes. She's my guest for everything. It's the prince. Yes. It's prince? No. No. The play's called Romeo and Juliet, and this is truly when it becomes that. So Romeo walks in. He's got a mask on, right? But he's like, who's that girl? Out loud. <laughs> I was like, who is she? He does. It's totally true. Yeah. And, and, and he says, did my heart love till now? For swear at sight. I, for I never saw true beauty till this night. Because that's why you love people, everybody. You just look at them? You look at them, and you're like, and you're oh. Like, oh, you're beautiful. I love you. Yeah. That's how love works. 100%. Here's this. It's eyeshadowing. It's not true. It's not how it works. It's not really how it works. Romeo ends up dead. And this is why. Because he's stupid. <laughs> no, that's not nice. That's Wait. very disrespectful. That's very disrespectful. It's very sad. Romeo it is, is a sad. very emotional person and he loves very deeply and very quickly. Indeed. And this is what's happening here right now. He sees this girl. She's so beautiful. She's so mm. perfect. And mm. his heart just is gone, just like that. And in order to really understand this book, this play, this piece by Rome about Romeo and Juliet is that you actually have to believe in love at first sight. Like you can see somebody from across yeah. the room and go, Oh my God, that's, I love you. I love you forever. And that's really what's happening to Romeo right now. And you Indeed. have to believe it. And I do believe also it, it never stopped. That's always his intention from this moment on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. tragic. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. they tried to do. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So anyway, he says it out loud. Boy, <laughs> This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dares the slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to fleer and scorn in our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Yeah, so Tybalt hears him talking, and he's like, get me a sword, I'm going to kill him right now. How dare he come to our party? Yeah. Like, seriously, they were not even invited. And so Capulet overhears Tybalt, because apparently we all overhear people. It's the music's not. not very loud yet. It does make the yeah. play better if they can overhear each yeah. other. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that has hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Oh, content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not, for the wealth of all the town here in my house, do him disparagement. Right. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will, the which, if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns and ill beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. So before we do, yeah. we're getting ready to turn the page, but Capio's like, oh, I've heard of Romeo. He just got a talking to by the prince. Of course he's not going to want to Right, no, 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 yeah, to. yeah. But Romeo's supposed to be a decent dude. Yeah, so there's two things going on with Capio. Like, first of all, I will die if we fight. Yeah, literally. And secondly, I've heard about this Romeo kid. He's it's okay. I've heard good things about him. Yeah. Why would we want to fight him? Yeah. But Tybalt is a bit of a hothead, yeah. yeah? And then and then Tybalt's like, I'll not endure him. I can't be down his face. He is gross. And Capulet, okay, first of all, Capulet's the older one. We've established that. He's older. Yeah. Tybalt is younger and really hot-headed. And he's like, I'll not endure him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and Capulet's like, uh, he shall be endured. And endure, by the way, is put up with. Mm-hmm. He shall be endured. What good man, boy, I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here or you? Go to. You'll endure him? God, you'll mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. <laughs> Sorry. Is so, indeed? The tri- this trick makes chance to scathe you, I know what. You must contrary me. Mary, tis time. And then he gets interrupted here. He's having to do two things at once. He's actually talking to Tybalt, and he's also talking to the crowd that's in the party. So he's like, Mary, just time. Like, I'm going to get you. And then he's like, well said, my hearts. Yeah, good one. That's a good joke. 
<laughs> and then he turns back to him and says, you are a Princox. Go. Be quiet or more light, more light. For shame, I'll make you quiet. What cheerly, my heart. So you see, he's like carrying on two conversations. Patience perforce with a willful color meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitter gall. So I have a, like a take on this. I don't think that Capulet listens to this piece. I think he like tells Tybalt to knock it off and then goes back to managing yes. the party. And then Tybalt's like, talking to himself like, Okay. I'm going to make this much worse very mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, sure. I'll stop now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you watch out. Oh, yeah. I'm coming for you. Romeo. This isn't going to go well. Tibble's awful. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it his fault? Strike? Is it his fault? Though? Uh, who? I mean, he oh, still well, can make choices. Come on, he can make choices. The whole few yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. yes, he has to struggle mm -hmm. against some Did he start the fight? We'll see. Not this one. Not this one. Okay. Um, I think it's Romeo. Oh, I thought you were reading the page. Oh, I am. Tybalt exits angrily. Romeo approaches Juliet and addresses her. If I profane. Okay, I have to say something. This entire exchange, or like throughout the next several 14 lines, exactly, because it's a sonnet, um, is a poem. It's a poem written for two parts. It's very unusual. Look down the first, so it's hand this, stand, kiss, much this, yeah. touch, kiss. It's in sonnet form. It's a very specific poetry form. And Shakespeare used the meeting of the two lovers, Romeo and Juliet. Um, and and he, he has them speak together in a sonnet. Isn't that beautiful? It's, it's like a duet, beautiful. like a yeah. song. And here's a prep though too. It's also an entire metaphor slash pun <laughs> all the way through. Which I the love. Whole thing. Okay, it's all figurative language. And in this case, metaphors and similes that relate um, Juliet to a statue one might find um, in a, like a church, okay? At a, uh, that somebody might go on a pilgrimage. Now, a pilgrim isn't somebody who just eats with Indians on Thanksgiving, which isn't a thing at all. Hmm. Just serious. Way, that's not even a thing. Look up pox ridden blankets yeah, oh. or something. <laughs> anyway, something like that. Yeah, a pilgrim is somebody who goes on a religious journey. So the people that we refer to as pilgrims, people who came to Massachusetts as... Uh, to flee yeah, religious persecution. The Puritans were mm -hmm. called pilgrims because they, they were on a pilgrimage, on a religious journey. So, but mm. regular pilgrims were people who went to shrines because they were on a religious journey because they wanted to accomplish something through prayer, like mm. solve a problem you know, or overcome an illness or something like that. And so these pilgrims would often also be called palmers. Palmers and pilgrims were people who journeyed on a religious journey. And so Romeo walks across the room to this beautiful girl that he sees as a saint, like a statue of a saint. And he considers himself a pilgrim on a pilgrimage, on a religious journey. It is like 20 feet. It's pretty cute. It was a long journey. <laughs> That's really sweet for religious purposes. <laughs> He's seen God to heal him from his heart. heart you anyway. know, so let's, let's, let's yeah, he has heart problems. He's mm. got a sensitive heart. He likes pretty things. He mm. does. Good thing she's got also substance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Substantial. Here we go. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, to blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much with mannerly devotion chosen this. For saints have hands what pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? I pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Oh then, dear saint, <laughs> Let lips do what hands do. Then or they pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Yeah, so he's come up to her and he's like, I'm going to take your hand and kiss it. I'm sorry if I like profane. Remember there's that That's word. That's right. Dirty it. He's like, excuse me. <laughs> kiss your hand. Pardon me. And she's like, and then he's, then he, you know, he wants 
to clearly do more than kiss her hand. And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> she like temporarily puts him off a little bit. This is like uh, the part about you, you know, um, saints have hands and pilgrims' hands you touch and palm to palm. Holy Palmer's kiss. He's like, and let's, let's let, do what the let's hands do. What do. The hands do. He's so naughty. And she's like, she says, and he says, don't saints have lips? <laughs> and she's like, I pilgrim. They must use a prayer. So she's like, mm -hmm, no, let's not do that. <laughs> and, uh, but finally, her final thing is saints do not move. They'll grant for prayer's sake. So again, it's that statue of a saint thing. I'm just, and she's basically saying to him, he's like, hmm, I'll grant your prayer. But I'm just going to stand here like a statue. I love it. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus, from my lips by yours, my sin is purged. So he kisses her. And he says that by kissing her, he got rid of his sin. So she's pretty clever, right? She lets him kiss her. And then she says, then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from thy lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. Kiss okay, so she's like, give it back. Oh my God, you put your sin on my lips? Is no, that no, right no. there? Oh. I, should, I didn't mean to, it was an accident. Oh, oh, Just oh. give it back. Okay. Okay, let's kiss again. <laughs> okay. And he says, are you kissed by the book? Madam. Madam. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my, hand, my hand's like this. And so I was like, uh-oh. They get interrupted. Stealing my lines. So basically, now, do, did kids at parties make out at their Gross. parents' parties? <laughs> Seriously? Gross. Okay, so this is very strange that he find, he goes up to her and he like takes her hand and kisses it. And then he's like, oh, I would like to kiss you on the lips now. And she lets him, I mean, I'm sure this is all done in like a little pretty little poem kind of thing, but it is a little bit forward. Like this wouldn't normally happen where you just kiss a girl you don't even know. But remember, he fell in love with her and she's the love of his life because he saw her. <laughs> and she lets him because she's overwhelmed by how charming he is. And he's a beautiful boy as well. And she now has a thought in her head that she should look at boys. I know. Right. Okay. No, I got a theory. Okay. I think she met Paris. Because this is late. I mean, oh. the dinner's already happened, right? This whole thing has already been going for a while. She met Paris. And she's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. He is attractive, do you think? I think, no, I think Paris, or, is, everybody says he is. And I right. believe the nurse when she says that he's, yeah. you know, he's a good looking guy. I don't think she is in it. Right, 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 right. And, and I think she's looking for the person that makes her feel the way that she thinks she should feel. Right. And so, so charming boy comes up and says, let me, you know, and really, you look like a her. saint. Yeah. Let me, and like plays. Yeah. Back yeah, and yeah, forth yeah, with yeah. her. She, she can take it cool. and dish it. Yeah. yeah. No. And so this is very weird, but they get interrupted by the nurse. Of course. She does that a lot. Mm -hmm. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. And Juliet leaves. Uh, what is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. And a good lady and a wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. And by that, she means money. She's yes. Like, oh. All uh, the money. The girl you were just making out with? <laughs> no, not that they were making out. Well, kind of. Yeah. Um, she is the daughter of the person who owns the place. And, and, and whoever gets her gets a ton of money. Keep it up, boy. Yeah. Is she? <laughs> She's encouraging him. <laughs> yeah, and the nurse doesn't stick around for this. This isn't like Romeo asking her this question. This is Romeo asking yeah. himself a question. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account. My life is my foe's debt. <sighs> Away be gone. Oh, this is Benvolio. <laughs> Away, be gone. The sword is at its best. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I have no idea. It's yours. I, so I fear. The more is my unrest. Okay. So Benvolio's like, let's go. Romeo's like, okay, let's go. And Capulet sees him leaving. And this is interesting. It tells you a little more about Capulet, too. He says, nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards. He's like, well, we still have dessert. You should mm -hmm. stay. He's like, is it Ian? So, so they tell him, like, they whisper to him they have to leave and stuff. And he's like, why then, I, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. Now, remember, he knows. Honest gentleman. Mm -hmm. He knows that's uh, uh, Romeo. And he's like, hey, can I say, 
have some dessert. Oh, you have to go? Okay. You guys are good guys. You guys are good guys. Have a good night. See, please tell the prince how I was behaving. Mm-hmm. And then they get out the door and he's like, oh, Sarah, by my fay, it waxes late all to my rest. He's like, dang, let me out of here. Yeah, this has been a long night. What a night. It's been super stressful for him because his enemy was right here and he didn't want a fight to go down and he got out of it. Maybe. Well averted. Yeah. So he, he feels pretty good. He did not die. Nobody died. Yet. Yet. Mm-hmm. Or shadowing. Or eyeshadowing. eyeshadowing. Now, kids are going to get that wrong on the test. <laughs> <laughs> What's eyeshadow? Eyeshadowing only happens on video. No. Foreshadowing yeah. happens on the page. Yes. Okay. Juliet's back. Oh, that's me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exit all but uh, Juliet and nurse. Are you the nurse? I'm the nurse. Oh, okay. You're Juliet. Um, come here, the nurse. What is he on, gentlemen? The son and heir of old Tiberio. Julia's being really clever here. She's being super clever. She's like, who's that guy? Okay. Yes. And then, uh, what's he that now is going out of door? Marry that, I think, be young Petruchio. What's he that follows there that would not dance? I know not. Hmm. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. <gasps> His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. <gasps> this is the dun dun dun. Gong, gong, gong. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? <gasps> oh, you're listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, a rhyme I learned even now of uh, one I dance with all. One calls within, Juliet! Anon, anon! Come, let's away, the stranger's all gone. Exit. She's in love with her family's sworn enemy. It's late. You saw him and it was over. Now, the smart thing to do would just be forget it. It just go. But you can't. Mary Paris. He's not bad looking. He's rich. And he has a prince for a cousin. That'd be the right thing to do. I guess she could just marry Mercutio. Or, or there is that guy that she knew for like thirty seconds that she kissed. Mm. Right. Why not throw her whole life away for that? I'm just saying. He talked a good talk. Compared her to a saint. That was a It's been a really good kiss. I'm um, very excited. Which one? <laughs> the first one was good enough to want a second. And and done. So the um mm-hmm. that words. Right, right. Um oh, let's see. I think I did have uh where are we at? Oh yeah. Uh we, we already talked about the oh wait, right the the Princox right Prince here. Cox. Yeah, mm-hmm. I underlined that. Yeah, that's just a um it's a mean little bad kid. Oh, okay. got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you, you thankfully, you uh, talked about the pilgrims and the palmers. So that mm-hmm. was really nice before we even got into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think, I feel like we, wait, that's, it's all scene five, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there was the, the pearl in an Ethiop's ear. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that where, at the beginning. Yeah. If you know where Ethiopia is, it's in um, Africa. And uh, on the East Coast, this verges a little bit on racism. Some people see it that way sometimes because what he's talking about is um, a very dark skinned woman wearing a pearl earring that the pearl would stand out against the dark skin. And remember, I told you earlier that brightness was equated with beauty. Right. And so that's what he's saying. Then he talks about a swan with crows. So the swan would really stand out as the white bird against the black birds. And that's not saying a crow is ugly. It's not saying that Ethiopian skin is bad. It's but it is saying that the bright shininess is stands what, up. Yeah, that's right. like what beauty is. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's just gray, but yeah. yeah. Um, and then you also explained March pain already, which was Mars pain. Mm-hmm. So that was helpful. And the trencher. Right, in the trencher. Right. Yeah. So I feel like we got a bunch of good words out of that. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, during this, prodigious. Romeo prodigious? talked about prodigious. Oh, yeah. yeah. Before, didn't we? Uh, huge. Did we? Yeah. Prodigious. Yes. Like uh, prodigious monstrous. birth. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. The, the beginning of the love was just so gigantic and yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she has to love a hated enemy. She can't not. She can't not. I mean, I think she could have made a better choice, but <laughs> you know, but then what would we have? We'd have like Romeo and no, 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 yeah, you Juliet can't, this whole Jerry story doesn't make any sense unless you believe in love at first sight yeah. and that they could truly, and there are plenty and of they mean instances it. where people have said they've fallen in love mm -hmm. at first sight and it and actually then is live worked. forever yeah. together as mm -hmm. partners yeah. in whatever way. Yeah. So this, yeah, it, it's a thing. Um, okay. So in this, uh, so Romeo in this scene, oh, we got um, a Capulet first, but Capulet, where? Yeah. Capulet's right. Really oh, tight. I'm on the wrong page. I'm on the wrong oh, page. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. So Capulet, He's throwing a party. He's being a host. He uh, he's really playing everybody. both. Yeah, sides he wants of everybody that. to dance. He uh -huh. uh, tries to calm Tybalt down. Yes, he defends Romeo. Yeah, right. Uh, he knows they're there, and he's polite to them uh, to the At very end. end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. And then Capula does his job. He does actually. He does a pretty darn good job there. Mm -hmm. he, I think he's better maybe at that sort of diplomatic behavior. Um, but as we'll see later, eyeshadowing, um, he still, because of his age, has some differences in oh, yeah. what he believes. Yes, he's a really good, this is one a of the bit reasons, old -fashioned. I think that Shakespeare works for modern audiences because yeah, he's not portrayed as a, uh, I mean, his, his lack of modernity yeah. is, is, a, is a problem later on. Yeah. Um, Wait, what was that word? Proxy? Prolixity. Pro prolixity. Prolixity. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think that really works there. Work? Oh, dang. No. Uh, I'm going to use it like just as often as right. possible. You're going to prolix it? I'm going to prolix the yeah. problem out of that. <laughs> so, and then yeah. Romeo in this, like, really his, his thing, his only thing in this is, uh, well, uh, right. who that walks in, follows who's up. her. I'm going to kiss her. And, and he, he does. Her. Kisses <laughs> her. Oh my gosh. That's Julia Capulet. We're oh, out, man. And I was right. About I'm gonna this. die. This is a I'm bad doomed. night. I have no yeah. choice. Mm -hmm. I'm That's exactly. Sue and die. And yeah. Tybalt, this is a big deal for. This pushes plot forward in mm -hmm. a big way. Tybalt's important. Tybalt is important. So he is like, no, no Romeo allowed. No Capulet or no Montagues allowed in this party. And then he gets sort of like told the what what by Capulet, and then is like, okay, no, but it'd be cool. not, yeah. I ain't gonna do nothing now. Not now. Just watch your back because it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets me. I think he doesn't like being told off either. Yeah. I think that as well. It felt especially uh -huh. by someone who's probably encouraged the few. But yes. Yeah. They have been fighting for a so, long yeah. time. And now all of a sudden, Capulet's like, like every word by the old Capulet. Yeah. Literally, I, I I think this is true because it could be like you, Capulet, and you, Montague. It follows that. But Capulet is the first person. To go the to prince, prince says, you know, by an airy word, by the old Capulet. He's is like, what the whole fight started the from. Prince pulls off. And so now Capulet, the one who started it, yeah. is telling Tybalt to lay off. And that's just, is it just out of fear for his own life? Sure, but, but it must feel, for, for Tybalt, like completely out of character. Yeah. For Capulet yeah, to suddenly mean it. not fight. He doesn't mean it. I mean, I'm sure Tybalt Probably. thinks that. And so Tybalt's just going to lay down a lot later. Oh, this doesn't work out well. No. Okay, so we got um, Juliet gets smooched and plays along. Yeah, I love how she. I love how she's like plays her like mm -hmm. she's trying to be like all coy. I bet yeah. the nurse reads her though really well. But she's like, "Hey, nurse, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? No, really, who's that? Yeah, she right. That, that's cute. You know, she's like that through the whole thing though. She doesn't always say what's real. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a good she's a good uh, double talker. And um, she, even with, with uh, Romeo, I assumed that when he came up, she's like, oh, my God, hottie. And, and instead, she's like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I would, yeah. I'm just going to stand here, whatever. Yeah. You know, and he's like, oh, you did do you just you put sun to. on there? So she is really great at, like, the two women who raised her. Mm -hmm. She can play both angles, mm -hmm. really. She's super complex. She's mm -hmm. manipulative. She is. She I is think so. Good. Or... Maybe Probably manipulative like or just maybe um, she's just got a, she's really deep yeah. and she has a lot of tools. She can operate on both levels. Like she can be that noble girl, but she yeah. also has a lot of fire and spirit. I down think there. so too. And that's all. And, and really we got to think about what had happened just before she came on set. Like yes. that's before we yeah. see her in this The scene. moment before is super important. 
Mm -hmm. uh, for you theater kids out there. Yes. What happened before Where we was she the before she came? She had just met and spent a dinner, a dinner. with the yeah. guy that her parents want her to marry. Paris. And how did that go? She was it couldn't she have been good. Bored. If it had gone yeah, well, so she'd be making out with him. Mm -hmm. True. But it didn't. It didn't go well because now she just saw this stranger from across the room. Notice he wasn't dancing and let him kiss her. She was intrigued. Conceivably, with she a wasn't mask thinking on. about Paris, obviously. Yeah. yeah, she didn't even actually see his whole face. Maybe. Did he leave the mask on for the kiss? Does it I say? Guess that's it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Artistic choice. Could it, could it? I guess maybe he just has very nice lips and hair. Well, in like the movies, doesn't he like take a behind the door or something? But that's what movies, movies though. Movies. So I guess it's director's choice. It yeah. is director's choice. Okay, because in Shakespeare's time, lot. in Shakespeare's time, kissing on stage wasn't that big of a deal. They they did kiss, but it would be a very like it wasn't like a big yeah because that's because that's how you kiss. Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, oh but you he's dumb. you know that. What? <laughs> She's is it, mm, like that? No. no. Okay. Oh, sorry. Please. Show us more. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. So, it was anyway, because it was as we <laughs> learned, Gross. that there were young men who played the parts of the women, and mm -hmm. uh, and also just it was a different time. Uh, you didn't see a lot of the affectionate interactions between mm -hmm. people. That would have been consider it improper yeah. um so really it was just a just a kiss just a little kiss yes the end. no real making out but it was magic it was magic it was the best it was holy even it was designated Super by pure. god as fate it was holy it was holy impressive with the oh, wh no. instead of an h so now you caught the pun -y. I've Thanks. never not had it. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So, um, that's um, the nurse. The, the nurse is, she interrupts the makeup yes, session. Yes. And well, don't do that. And she finds out how, who Romeo is. And, and if you, we got to think this through. She has a conversation with a boy that she probably saw kissing Julia. Yes. And then she is like, oh no, I don't know who that guy is. And then goes find out. And then she, she's kind of in on this. She knows from the very beginning. Yes. Oh, that's Romeo of the Montagues. Yikes. And you shouldn't have done that. I mean, mm -hmm. that, and then she even overhears what Juliet says about it. And she's like, what was that? And Juliet's like, oh, nothing. I was just dumb. Yeah. I learned a new rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. But Somebody... the nurse isn't stupid. She's mm -hmm. different, but she's not stupid. So she must have a clue as to what's going on right now. I think that is accurate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Benvolio just wanted to get out of the house. Yeah, he's like, let's go to the party. Let's leave the party. We're just supposed to dance. <laughs> one he's dance. Plot, he's just a plot mover and repeater. He's yeah. like, let's go. Okay, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's his, his job in the whole thing. So yeah. now we are at a place where they have met. Mm -hmm. It is and love at love. first sight, mm -hmm. or at least second kiss. Mm -hmm. And now we know Tybalt is coming up with his sort of fiery vengeance, mm -hmm. right? Yep. <sighs> And also there's going to have to be some fallout around Paris, right? Because she's not in she's love with him. Her parents have not committed it. to that relationship. Yeah. yeah. And she's, she's not. not. So if you're Julia right now, you go to your parents and say, look, not Paris, but I really like this guy, Romeo of the Montagues. And that's not going to go down well, well, it? Why not? Why not? Why not? Like, okay, come on. Maybe <clears throat> this is great timing because they just got told by the prince they can't fight anymore. Well, no, that's true. They could combine their families. That is true. They're but both only the children. Fear, can you imagine though the fear of Juliet her entire life probably yeah. has had it drilled into her that Montagues and Capulets don't mix. Okay, on that note, then she should just stop. Except she's in love and uh -huh. she was so partially she's raised 14. by her niece. Or her, her okay, nurse. then tell somebody. She can't because she's her mother's daughter and the nurse's daughter. She's in the middle of all of that. She should just die. She, she, not just like that though. Yeah. There, obviously, there's a lot oh, more. Yeah. It's just that a very was, complex. That was Act play. One, and basically, the Act One job is to introduce the characters, and we have met all the important characters, and we've gotten to know a little bit about them. We know that Romeo is a, um, a essentially a kid that has a tendency to get sad, and he also acts quickly on his feelings. 
we know that Juliet is pretty smart and capable. It operates on two kind of levels, both as like this girl that knows how to be um, manipulative and careful, like a, like a noble girl ought to be able to manage herself, especially a smart one. But she also has this kind of secret, like uh, down to earth kind of have fun with love kind of uh, side that's coming out too. So she's modeling what both of her moms have given her. Right. And uh, we know that uh, Capulet's trying to make things right, sort of. And we know that Tybalt is out for blood. And we know that Benv Benvolio wants people to get and get to places quickly and get out too. And <laughs> we, but also it's important that we know that Mercutio is a little bit not right. And we it's figured true. Yeah, we've only met him a little bit, but we know that already. And that's really key to the story as we move forward. So we know who the characters are. And uh, when we meet up again for act two, we find out what they're going to do about it. Um, I decided to draw a little picture real quick. Oh, right. Right. Cause of... you're supposed to do that on the final page. Oh. You draw a picture of one of the scenes and what did you, right. what did you do? Well, I just very, very quickly drew, uh, you have to hold it close. Um, um, there, there it is. Just a, like a head with like a mask. Um, I hadn't really put any hair or gender really, but it's kind of looking like a girl, but whatever. It could be a boy. Um, so I just drew a mask because it reminds me of the, the guy's masking. Right. Mm -hmm. It also kind of looks like his eyes are exploding. <laughs> yeah. And the master, I think a bit I of a, a metaphor yeah. too, you know, like a being something that you art or yes. covering what you really are yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and that is it i can't stop drawing act one we will do this again tomorrow for act two and, well we don't know when you're and we're pros at this now so it might go quicker <laughs>